This year celebrates 10 years of vision Gran Turismo. And in that time, over 30 automotive collaborations, over three GT titles. Each car being utterly unique and the fruit of a collaborative, creative endeavor like no other. Welcome to Barcelona. This is the Gran Turismo World Finals. My name's Jules Hardy, and we thought, why not add one more brand new Vision GT car into the mix? What do you think of that? Let's hear it. Is that beautiful? Yes. Please, please, please welcome John Kristeski, who is the senior uh, creative uh, designer for Genesis North America, and of course, uh, Kazanori Yamauchi san, who is the series producer of Gran Turismo. Give a big round of applause. We have some amazingly talented gentlemen in the building right now. So, first of all, I mean, I guess we should probably start with what's its name and how did it come about? Sure. Yeah. It's the Genesis X Grand Bellinetta Vision GT concept. And it actually came about through the global collaboration of our design group, which is made up of an extremely talented, diverse group of designers from all over the world. And they're all race enthusiasts, of course, and fans of the Gran Turismo game. <laughs> and of course you have other, you know, cars in Gran Turismo. We do. We were really excited in 2021 to bring our G70 into the game, as well as the GR4, GR3. And now we have our latest uh, addition to the family, which is our boldest expression of dynamism. And it fits within our Genesis brand design ethos of athletic elegance. And of course, you know, you, you create some in incredible cars. I mean, how does it differ, you know, creating a Vision GT car versus, a, a, well, I was about to say run of the mill Genesis right. car, but I don't think that's really right. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. It, it's, it's actually um, pretty intense because you've got a blank sheet of paper, which is oftentimes is a little bit more difficult than having the old draft course. Too, too, yeah. much <laughs> too much choice. Too much choice. Too much choice. But we really wanted to capture a level of realism with this uh, design. So with that, we made sure that we went ahead and put the same level of intensity into the design and level of precision that we normally would with our production cars. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Like, talk us through some of like your, your fave kind of exterior, you know, things absolutely. that like... Yeah, I'll, I'll actually, since I'm looking at this, I'll start with the rear of the car. Okay. Uh, the rear third quarter of the car was inspired by the muscularity of a professional athlete ready to start, uh, to launch into a race. And that translates into the pair of our gesture that runs through the entire car. And then the overall silhouette, uh, giving it that traditional, not traditional, but the classic uh, 60s, 70s race cars that were so beautiful, long dash axle. And then with that in mind, what we did is uh, obviously we wanted to carry through our production identity in the front of the car, which is inspired by our Genesis emblem with the crest grille and our two-line signature inspired by the wings. 
It's very pretty. Uh, and of course, you've got a beautifully, you know, a beautiful interior there as well. Like, what was the kind of idea behind, like, how did you want people to feel when they, you know, if they sat in this car? What was, what was the idea? Yeah, no, that was great because with a car like this, when it's all about racing and performance, you want to create a singular purpose, which was all connecting the driver to the car. So we literally wanted to make the interior feel like it was a reflection of the body of the driver. And um, a beautiful orange. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, uh, we, we, we recently showed the Magma Orange with our GV80 Coupe concept uh, in New York, and we definitely wanted to bring that to you here today. And Yamaguchi-san, um, I mean, it's 10 years of Vision GT. How, how did you feel coming up the escalator outside and seeing all of the cars that have been created because of this idea? あの、さっきもね、申し上げましたけれども、1台1台本当に長い時間をかけて自動車メーカーのたくさんのデザイナーの方がま、本当に命を削って作ったような車たちなんですよね。1台1台がで、それが一遍にこんなにたくさん集ま
and welcome from Barcelona to the Gran Turismo World Finals. I'm Jules Hardy and we have got day one done. Oh yes, yesterday was the Toyota Gazoo Racing GT Cup, which was full of action. Coque Lopez coming in third, Cockerbun coming in second and local boy Paul Ura taking the win. Okay, but today is all about the Manufacturers Cup and this has been a bit of a roller coaster for Porsche. So in Amsterdam, Engel in the Stroza was out with injury, uh, but they still went on to win with just two drivers. This time, he's back but Takuma Sasaki isn't here, so they are back to two drivers. Does this mean they're still going to win with this rather unusual strategy? We shall find out. Why don't we take a look first, though, at the competition format? 36 drivers are split across 12 teams, with one from each of the regions listed. From these 36, 12 drivers are selected to compete in a single hot lap time trial session. The results of this determine the grid positions for the qualifying race, for qualifying, once again, the teams will select a single driver to compete in qualifying. This driver holds the responsibility of getting the team the best race grid position possible. Now comes race time. Each of the three drivers within the team have to take a stint in the race no longer than three or more laps, and all tyre compound rules must be adhered to. Well, a very big hello and welcome to the GT desk for the first time for the Manufacturers' Cup for the Gran Turismo World Finals in 2023. JB, I cannot wait for this. The World Series showdown a couple of months ago was incredible, and here we get to crown our champions. Yeah, my only question really is whether the home crowd here in Barcelona is going to make more noise than they did in Amsterdam. I'm sure they will. <laughs> they did yesterday, so uh, there's some very cool racing coming up. I'm sure we're going to hear from these guys behind us. I am sure you're right. Let's have a look, shall we, at the holo uh, qualifying highlights that took place earlier on here today. This was a uh, qualifying time trial, one lap dash around the Nürburgring 24-hour lap. Out. This was Lamborghini in there qualifying. That's from Team Radio. That's so f***ing annoying. <laughs> right, I'm glad we were able to bleed that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Lamborghini unfortunately not having the pace. Team BMW though quick initially uh, dipping under the eight minute barrier. But Team Subaru as well looking very, very fast as they have done uh, at every World Series event so far. Coming across the line to go provisionally second place on a 7.58. Yeah, not a bad lap time there for them. This was Team Toyota's effort, and they were looking pretty handy out there, as you can see behind the wheel of the car, Kobayashi going to pole. So qualifying results then after that one lap session that we had earlier on this morning. It's Team Toyota that will line up on pole position ahead of the qualifying race, which will determine the grid for the grand final. Subaru will join them on the front row. Then you've got BMW, Nissan, McLaren, Genesis, Honda, Mercedes-AMG, Maya down in eighth place, along with Porsche, the winners from the Manufacturers' Cup in Amsterdam a few months ago, ahead of Renault, Lamborghini, with Mazda bookending the field. It's going to be hugely interesting to see how it all works out. Uh, here are the, the start list. These are the drivers that will take into the qualifying race. Only one driver allowed to compete in this qualifying race, though, JB. Yeah, very strong field there as well. Team Toyota filled in Koke Lopez. He came so close to taking the win here yesterday in the Toyota Gazoo Racing GT Cup. It's giving me a zono there for Team Zubru. He's been there for a very, very long time. Knows the car well and we know how fast he is. A bit further down the field, we have Will Murdoch back in the Lamborghini. They were third last time out um, at uh, the last event at Amsterdam. So not happy with P11, I'm sure, on the grid, but we know the pace is there for those guys. And also a returning Angel in Estrosa yeah, for this course. event as well. Really looking forward to seeing the Chilean back after a frightening accident a couple of months ago. He's back, he's recuperated, he is ready to be a part of Team Porsche. And we're ready to have you a part of the Manufacturers' Cup Grand Finals here tonight as well. There's loads of campaigns on Gran Turismo 7 as we speak. Take a look at this and find out what we've got in store for you. If you've opened up GT7 in the past couple of days, you'll see that it's been updated for the GT World Finals in Barcelona. It's your chance to get rewarded with amazing gifts all weekend. If you think you can predict who'll be our 2023 winners, click the bonus campaign button on the GT7 map screen to join the Predict the Winner campaign by Brembo. Receive a million credits every time you predict correctly. You can vote right up until the start of the grand final race of each event. You can also get rewarded by watching the world finals directly in GT7. Click the button on the GT7 map screen and join the viewers campaign by BBS. You will automatically receive a new Vision GT concept car for every show that you watch. While you're in GT7, participate in the final celebration race to experience the same races as the drivers competing at the world finals this weekend. Keep practicing and who knows, 
It could be you going head-to-head -head here next year. Well, don't say we don't treat you here at the Gran Turismo World Series. My only regret is that we're not able to partake in that because we're busy on air at the moment, Jimmy. Yeah, I left my PS5 at home. <laughs> Amateur mistake. I could be amazing if it's better off, but unfortunately, no. Well, anyway, there's loads of things going on with Gran Turismo 7, including GT Sophie 2.0. New AI system that's come out. This is... Uh, been developed in line with PlayStation, and it's an incredible feat of technology, Jimmy. And you've had your own experience with it recently. Yeah, super exciting. Uh, I've not had a chance to play uh, with GT Sophie until uh, yesterday, and I'm so impressed with just how intuitive the AI is. And uh, uh, to have it now uh, coming as a permanent feature uh, in the GT7 on PS5 only um, is uh, is amazing. The great to see it here, and I think that's uh, the single player experience is a massive part of Grand Christmas. So it's good to see it being fleshed out. And it's a real learning AI system as well. It learns as it goes along, it evolves, it picks up lines from different drivers, different cars, and it's incredible how you are, as it says on the video there, be able to race together as one on GT7. It is absolutely spectacular. Get yourself on there and have a go. We highly, highly recommend it. There is loads of things going on uh, within GT7, as we said, but also here tonight in the Manufacturer's Cup. Now, let's shift our attention back to that because we've got teams to watch, and including in that is Team Toyota. Coque Lopez will be taking it to the helm uh, for that outfit, who start on pole position for the qualifying race. And as you can hear from the rapturous applause in Barcelona, he is a hot favourite. Yeah, no pressure, Coque. I mean, he, he did pretty well yesterday under the pressure of the home audience, and they, anytime anything happens for Spanish drivers, these guys are making a ton of noise. So, uh, but Team Toyota have always been very strong in the Manufacturers' Cup, so I'm sure we're going to see a similar performance there. Hitsuka Mimir Zona, of course, representing Team Subaru, uh, his normal, fairly chilled out self, <laughs> I think it's fair to say. Um, I'm not sure he feels pressure anymore, but uh, definitely a hot shoe in this Subaru. Yeah, Hitsuka Mimir Zono, famous, of course, for doing the Triple Crown in 2020, the Toyota GR GT Cup, the Manufacturers' Cup with Team Subaru, and also the Nations Cup. Anyway, let's go over to the qualifying race. These are the details. Circuit of Barcelona, Catalonia, no chicane layout. Of course, where else could we kick off our Manufacturers' Cup action tonight? Eight laps, though, and this is going to determine the grid for the grand final. Yes, I mean, this is one of those circuits that you... If I'm honest, when you look at it for the first time, I, think, mm, I don't know, but we've seen some amazing racing over the last couple of days here, and uh, I think we're going to see exactly the same today. These guys are all fighting and squabbling, as you say, for the, that qualifying position in the grand final. And we know at the circuit we'll get to a bit later on, that qualifying position is crucial. So this is going to play a big part in tonight's event. I was talking to Yamauchi-san before we got into uh, this race, and I said, you know, who do you think is going to do well? And he said, the thing is, I can't tell, because it depends on what happens in this qualifying race. <laughs> Even though, let's look at Team Toyota and Subaru as that example, they qualified well. If they get unlucky in this qualifying race, they could be right mire back in the field. And as you say, puts them on the back foot for the grand final. Yeah, and the great thing, of course, about the Manufacturers uh, Cup is that we have uh, various different cars, various different strengths and weaknesses. We always say the Subaru, not so quick in a straight line, but in the corners, lots of downforce, very agile compared to some of the other cars. Whereas the Toyota, historically, has been a bit of a rocket in a straight line. So different strengths for different cars. Well, we asked you to pick who you thought was going to take the victory in the grand final here tonight and become the Manufacturers Cup champions of 2020. 28.2% of you voted for Subaru, 26.5% for Team Toyota, 11.4% for Team Porsche, who of course were the winners from the World Series showdown. As we know, they are a driver down. Here is Angela Destroza. I'd love to get a huge round of applause for Angel as well, returning to competition in the Gran Turismo World Series after a very nasty accident. Great to see him recuperated, back out fighting, and Team Porsche, despite being a driver down, it always seems to be the way in their circumstances that they don't fall in their direction. But none Nonetheless, you know that their drivers are going to give it their all. Yeah, it's great to see him back. And we know it's cliche, but we're one big family here at GT. And the moment uh, everyone saw Angel, let's go over and give him a big hug. You know, everyone's just really pleased to see him. So, um, will it, but will it be an advantage again? I mean, we, last time we, sort of, we thought maybe it was the case. I mean, the rules are very much in place, so it isn't. But having two drivers, <laughs> it's one less possibility to go wrong, would you say, maybe? You, could, you could argue that, but then there's one more possibility to go wrong if you make a mistake when you come into the pit lane, don't <laughs> yeah, select the right okay, driver, yeah. don't select the right tyre. All of those sorts of things have to be taken into consideration. And, of course, there's two different types of races we've got tonight. We've got the qualifying race and we've got the grand final. Now, the qualifying race is just one driver from that manufacturer who competes over the course of it. The grand final, you've got three different drivers. Driver changes, tyre strategy, fuel strategy, possibly a bit of inclement weather coming into that final race too. Yes, I mean, it's about using the right driver at the right time as the crowd very much getting warmed up. I think our caraman knows what he's doing. He's finding all the Spanish drivers. So, hey, look at it. And then the big cheers from the crowd as the drivers down. Just getting the last little bit of warm-up on circuit. This, this time is essential, really. Just getting yourself zoned in, getting yourself... Uh, calm for the race. It's very easy to get 
Uh, it's very easy, I think, to, to get a little bit on edge when you've got a big crowd like this behind you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's have a look then, shall we, at the starting lineup. Uh, just once again to remind you for this qualifying race. In fact, indeed, for the uh, Manufacturers' Cup overall. So you can see Team Toyota. They've got Rakuta Kobayashi. They've got Koke Lopez, who finished on the podium yesterday in the GR GT Cup, and Adriano Carazza as part of their lineup. Uh, Team Subaru, you've got Takumi Miyazono, Roberto Sternberg, and Killian Drumont, the very fast flying Frenchman, who we know uh, has been incredibly fast. A couple of new names in there, though, Jimmy. I'm looking at Team BMW. You've got Caelan Roach, the American driver this is his first world series event great to have him here just 18 years of age and he has uh, been held in very high esteem amongst his comp uh, compet competitors i'll put the teeth back in <laughs> yeah and he was quick yesterday in the uh, to work as were racing gt cup but not quite able to get through uh, to one of the podium positions but uh, incredibly strong lineup. It's what we're used to really at these GT events. I mean, Manufacturers Cup, I think for me, is, is always been my favorite because of the different cars involved. It's very much uh, how real life racing is with different cars with their strengths, different weaknesses, and of course, uh, it being an endurance style format as well. It's not down to one driver, it's a pure team effort. I think that's a, really what pure racing is. And what about Team Lamborghini as well? Last time we saw them at the World Series Showdown, they were on the podium, let's not forget. They're mired down in 11th place. We saw some very visible frustration in the qualifying highlights a few minutes ago from Randall Hayward. Do you think they are going to be able to turn their fortunes around? Now, I spoke to Will Murdoch a bit earlier and actually uh, after the qualifying, he said, well, you know, listen, the car wasn't too great in qualifying, but in race trim, we do have quite a bit of pace. So I, I don't know, maybe watch them for them to come through. I mean, Catalonia historically isn't always one of the circuits we go, mm, OK, this is an overtaking track. But from what we've seen in the Pro-Am races earlier on, which you guys <laughs> will, will see at some point, and some of the racing yesterday, actually, it seems to be a, a good track for racing around here for these guys. So the drivers are sitting there waiting to go racing at the moment. The tension's sort of beginning to build. There's a lot of pressure here, live atmosphere. As a driver, what goes through your mind at this point of view? I mean, really, it's just about trying to sense yourself and calm down. You know, I've, I had it a couple of times we were sitting on a starting grid and thinking, oh, this is a bit much. <laughs> this is a bit crazy. But in, in reality, once uh, uh, the lights go on, sort of the visor comes down, be it virtual or not, you're very much in the zone, you're in the car. And these, tell you what, these headphones, I actually drove on stage the other day with these the headphones these guys are using, and you cannot hear anything <laughs> apart from the game, which is what you need here. I tell you what, that's what we need here in the GT desk, because <laughs> we can hear everything behind us here at the moment. Anyway, we're about ready to go for the qualifying race for the Manufacturers Cup for the GT World. World Series World Finals. Let's get ready to go, shall we, and see exactly what's going to happen. Drivers are in place then. We are ready to go for the Gran Turismo World Finals. We are live, of course, in seven different languages. We've got the Japanese commentators. There's the Portuguese guys, Duarte and Francisco. Emilio and Andrea for Italy. We have got uh, Andrea and Lucas in Spain. Fabian and Donald for Team France. And in the German team as well, you can see there, we've got Mikkel Volk and also Florian Strauss. Here's the grid then, lined up and ready to go for this race. It's Koke Lopez who will line up on the grid for Team Toyota. Subaru with Takuma Miyazono at the helm. BMW have got Seiya Suzuki at the wheel with Team Nissan with Estevez. Let's see what he is going to be able to do here for this race. Team McLaren lining up P5. Genesis and Nico Romero P6 on the grid. Honda in P7 with Jao Pessoa. Next up is Mercedes AMG. Lucas Benelli at the wheel. Ninth on the grid, Angel in Estroza, one driver down for Team Porsche. Let's see whether that affects them. Renault have got uh, Alex Lopez at the wheel. Lamborghini with Will Murdoch in 11th place. And the grid is completed by Okamoto in the Mazda P12. Now, no tyre strategies to worry about over the course of this particular race here, Jimmy. A rolling start at the circuit to Barcelona, Catalonia. What are your expectations? I mean, the strap for me, if I was racing, was just to send it straight away. Eight laps, a bit of a sprint race here, especially if you're a team like Porsche or Mercedes AMG down in sort of the lower half of the field there. You want to, you want to try and get up, uh, get going early. You don't have time to be stuck behind maybe slower cars in the field. Team Toyota, though, uh, they have sort of the easiest job. Koke Lopez, all he has to do really is try and navigate T1 nice and cleanly. 
and uh, even with maybe not the best race, you can still find yourselves in the top three or top four. Of course, that's where you want to be going into the grand final. Well, this race is going to determine the grid for the last race of the evening for the Manufacturers' Cup. Let's see what is going to happen at the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. Only one team will be able to be crowned as the champions, and we're about ready to kick off proceedings here tonight in Barcelona. It's the Gran Turismo World Finals. It's the Manufacturers' Cup. It's go in the qualifying race here tonight with Team Toyota leading the field across the line from Team Subaru, BMW, Nissan, McLaren and Genesis. Now, they're all going to have the advantage of the slipstream, but for Team Toyota. Let's see what happens down to the first corner. Team Subaru coming out of pressure there with BMW trying to get their oboes out on the outside. Are they going to make a move stick? No, and they might come under a bit of pressure here from Team Nissan through into Turn 2 for the first time. Yeah, Subaru there, but with no choice to defend Kuo Miyazono, knowing the weakness of that car is that straight line speed. So the run down to T1 was really important for that team. They were able to keep Team BMW behind for now, but of course, it's coming to the twisty section. This is the bit that Subaru likes. On board now with the Nissan uh, GTR coming down towards the head. And for the first time, I'm going to take this one as if you are close enough. Not quite close enough for a move, though, though on the inside there. As we now come into the middle sector behind, there's a bit of battle between Genesis and McLaren. Genesis do have the inside line into the middle sector. They'll take P5. Nice move from Genesis, making a position. Yeah, Nico Romero getting that position then ahead of Team McLaren. Coco Nazuno behind the wheel of the uh, McLaren at the moment as they come through Turn 9 on the run in towards Turn 10. Now, this is one of the few overtaking opportunities here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. And will we see any dives to the inside? Will we see any defensive lines from the cars being attacked in front? Nico Romero knows that. He goes defensive. We've got a squabble for position as well as Nissan up the inside of BMW for third place as well. And Subaru now back into second position as well. Genesis and BMW now going toe-to-toe here for fourth place and McLaren getting themselves involved in the action through the right hand and we go it's too wide between McLaren and Genesis as they come through the final couple of corners who is going to be able to give way here they're banging wheels as they come through the final corner and it looks like McLaren are going to get hung out to dry here on the inside keep an eye out for Renault in the background there as well Alex Lopez the Spaniard behind the wheel and it's all about the slipstream now down towards T1 yeah Renault is in the slipstream nowhere no to go he's boxed in McLaren they're keeping him behind the Genesis that's very Kevin drive them. We can't quite see him there because of the pip. But down comes Genesis into T1. Renault looking around the outside. Becomes uh, still the outside now for this long right hand of T3. I think McLaren got just popped into the gravel a little bit there. And Renault threw up into P6. Now, while that's all going on, we did just miss it in the back of our picture. Down with the hairpin on the back straight. Team Honda and Team Porsche came together. Honda losing five spots there down to P12. We'll get a replay of that when we can. But contact there also being investigated by the stewards at the moment. So difficult start the race for Jao Pessoa for Honda down into 12th position 1.3 seconds off the back of Team Mazda on board we ride here with McLaren Koki Mizuno behind the wheel of that machine as they come out of turn five through six into seven and eight this is the uphill chicane very much one at a time through here it's all about the run through turn nine and in towards turn ten where you can set something up you need a good exit and a good run through this corner slightly wide there for Renault and Alex Lopez is that going to compromise his traction out of the corner he knows it is he goes for the defensive line down into 10, he's going to try and squeeze the Macca to the outside as they go two by two on the brakes into the left-hander. Renault holding station in sixth place for the time being. Yeah, nice defensive driving there from uh, Alex Lopez. He was, of course, beating yesterday as well. Very fast driver. And, of course, a bit of a home hero as well to the Spanish crowd. A little bit of a slide there from uh, McLaren. Koki Mizuno there at the wheel of that car at the moment as we come down to complete another lap. Coming on to lap three, your race order as it stands. Toyota P1, Subaru P2, not too far behind, only half a second. Then a little bit of a gap back to Nissan and BMW. BMW right now, right in the slipstream coming down towards T1. Nissan have got a defensive in the background there. Will there be an overtaking opportunity? Not quite. See that Nissan, unsurprisingly, is an absolute rocket in a straight line. Yeah, well, I knew that it would be, Jimmy, because I know that you've been a big fan of Nissan, but they are coming un un under ever-increasing pressure from BMW as it stands for now. Seo Suzuki behind the wheel of the BMW M6. It's a fairly old car in terms of some of the machinery that we see out here on the grid, but Suzuki, with the balance of performance regulations, able to really harry that BMW round. And of course, they won the World Tour back in 2019, uh, back in Paris uh, for that event. And let's see whether they're going to be able to get themselves onto the podium. Of course, this race doesn't count towards the grand final and the overall standings, but it will count to the grid for that grand final. Let's see if we can piece together what's happened here. This is Porsche versus Honda on lap one. Yeah, there it is. Porsche dives in there, causes contact between Honda and AMG. 
And uh, basically, I think yeah, that's a pretty slam dunk penalty to Porsche, I think, there, Tom. Yeah, Jose Serrano making a pretty ham fisted attempt of that, unfortunately, and dropping into eighth position. We'll see whether the stewards do indeed award them with a penalty. Through into the hairpin, we go slightly wide there for Nissan. That could compromise their exit. Don't think it'll be anything immediate for them to worry about. But look at this train of cars that's now forming behind the Nissan. You've got BMW, Genesis, Renault are in there, McLaren, Porsche, even Lamborghini to a certain extent as well. They're all sort of queuing up behind this Nissan, waiting to go through. In this hand train here, we saw Matera Estevez uh, driving a little bit earlier on. Very, very smooth driving stuff. It's very close to the wheel he does as well, which can't do his back any good, but you know, I'm not a, I'm not a back specialist. I'm a, uh, hopefully a motor sports <laughs> specialist, <laughs> fingers crossed. But uh, we go back to that battle between Nissan and BMW. We see Team BMW getting a little bit closer on the straight. Here comes Genesis, though. Big break in the background. Porsche and McLaren fighting for that's P7 there. Porsche will have the inside here for the long right hand as Angela and Estroza battling away there and uh, just about keeping the place for now. Lamborghini went through there as well, Jimmy. They managed to pick the pocket of McLaren. You can see them there now on the inside looking for a move on Porsche into turn four. They go side by side with McLaren once again. Inside line kicking up a bit of dust on the curb. Rear end just begins to step out. McLaren having to step out of the corner there and eventually relinquish that position going for the outside line into turn five. It's going to be a brave driver who can manage to hold station there because the car the corner is cambered there on the inside and it favors that tighter line meanwhile bmw really all over the rear wing of nissan as we come up the rise through seven and eight now so here we are then on the midway through lap four looking back from Matteo Estevez, his Nissan GTR looking over the rear wing. Here comes the BMW M6 looking to the outside. Will he dive to the inside there? And Suzuki looking up the inside. He might better make a move stick just on the rear quarter. He's got the move done pretty much now. Drag race up to the next left, right. And Nissan's got some grunt though and just about stays on the inside line. But look at the background. Dennis is there and Nico Romero behind. Very, very close to making a move. All it takes is one of these guys to have a little bit of an issue and they're all going to end up uh, shuffling places. Speaking of which, Porsche has been given that penalty, uh, unsurprisingly there for that move there. Uh, I mean, it was a slam dunk in my book. Yeah, well, that's unfortunate for Team Porsche. Two second penalty is going to drop them uh, into the clutches of McLaren and probably behind as well. Now BMW coming in a threat here from Genesis down the start, finish straight. This has all begun to concertina up as they come down in towards turn one. Genesis on the outside, BMW on the inside. Who's going to be last of the late breakers? Are Renault going to be able to join and try and join in on the party as well? They're going to try and pick the pocket of Genesis on the exit of turn two. They go to the outside line through turn three, but they're going to have to duck back inside, I'm sure, and indeed they do. Porsche sitting right behind in the wheel tracks there as well, but of course they have that two-second penalty to serve in towards four. No moves being made into their Genesis, though, closing up once again onto the back of BMW. So this is all action stations. We're over the halfway stage in this race, and of course this, to remind you, will determine the grid for the grand final race coming up here later on this evening, and it's anybody's guess as to who is going to be occupying the top five positions for now. Also a nice little starter for what to expect. I think uh, here are the teams, here are the speed, and here are the manufacturers to look out for in today's world final. We're watching the battle right now for fifth and sixth between Genesis and Renault. The beautiful Genesis Vision GT, uh, Vision GT revealed a bit earlier on. Uh, shame we can't see that in the race, really, isn't it? But uh, we we'll won't be able to miss it. It's bright orange. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Oh, BMW there closing up once again onto the back of Nissan oh, Genesis. Close. Like a Dan Dare on the brakes into turn 10 there. It's just one at a time at the moment, but Nissan looking a little bit raggedy, if I may say so, taking a few different lines. We know that car's got brilliant mechanical grip, and it's fairly, fairly handy in a straight line, and that seems to be key keeping them in third position for now. But look at the gap that's emerged between themselves and Subaru in second place. It's 2.7 seconds as it sits now, and it seems to be a case, in my opinion, of when and not if these drivers are going to be able to find their way through, as long as those behind don't get involved in their own little squabbles. They're all getting bunched up on the straight behind, and there's nothing they can do. They don't have the power to get by on the straight line here. But looking back from the BMW, the gap has somewhat increased, and that's side by side. BMW looking for a move around the outside at T1 of the Nissan. Can you make it work? No, he can't. This has been great defensive driving here by Matteo Estevez. They're still looking, though. Suzuki trying the long way around at T3. Not usually a place to do it at this point, but having a go anyway. It's getting desperate at this point. Tom. We can see a lunge now into T4. Nissan goes over to the right-hand side to defend, but is he going to have the momentum to keep it there? Yes, he does. This is great driving by Estevez and Nissan. Yeah, superb defensive driving. This is exactly what he needs to do, not defending fresh air when he doesn't need to. Into turn five, bit of a bump on the back there, just a signal and warn he's there now. Look at this. 
wider line from the BMW of Seo Suzuki trying to get a better exit on the run out of that corner through the kink of turn six and up in towards turn seven and eight behind into turn one and two. We saw Genesis and Renault going two by two. Those positions have stayed as they are for now, but Nissan looking a little bit raggedy with Matteo Estevez behind the wheel through that right-hander. It's going to be the run through here and down in towards turn 10, but we know that that Nissan's got good straight line speed. He's just going to park that car towards the inside very briefly, and Suzuki doesn't have an answer in that BMW as it stands for now. Nissan holding in third place for the time being as Renault have now got the better of Genesis for P5, or have they there? Knocking it one at each other through the left and the right-hander. Renault are now on the outside here. Genesis going through. Lamborghini ready to pick up the pieces as well as McLaren running down the hill in towards the penultimate corner. Lamborghini going through on the inside of Renault, so they managed to go from attacking to defending and losing a couple of places. Make that two, make that three places, as now McLaren have picked their pocket. So from going to battling for the top five places for uh, Team Renault, they're now down into seventh. Will Murdoch has a great drive so far. Plus five on his starting position. Start at P11. Now looking maybe for P5 on Genesis. Down towards T1. Genesis and Nico Romero goes defensive. Keeps the inside line. Will Murdoch tries the alternate line to try and get a better run here into T3. Still sitting with the inside. It's Genesis. Lamborghini, though, completely just stuck to the rear. Spoiler. So uh, Will was right. The race pace of that car is good. It does have that base. It just lets itself down a little bit over a single lap. 11th on the grid to remind you, that's where Lamborghini started this one there. On knocking on the door of the top five as it stands for now. This is fantastic driving from Will Murdoch in the background there. You saw Porsche versus Renault going side by side. Porsche on the recovery following that first lap penalty that they suffered. And they don't manage to get themselves ahead of Renault for the time being. On board we ride here with Koke Mizuno. Up the hill, in towards the climb of turn seven and turn eight, into the right-hander of turn nine. Mizuno keeping a close eye on what's going on in front of him, but also, I'm sure, keeping a beady eye on his rearview mirror and those battling behind them as well. BMW versus Nissan, part 354, as we come down in towards turn 10. On the outside, go BMW. It's going to be a tall order from there to try and level peg with Nissan in towards this series of corners. An absolutely fantastic defensive driving from Mateo Estevez once again, putting that car in exactly the right positions and not allowing the opportunity for Suzuki and the BM to find his way past. Nearly made it work. I've just noticed on the battle for the lead is now very close. Only a tenth of a second between Toyota and Subaru as we come on now to the final lap of the race. A flash of the lights there for Takumi Miyazono saying, you know what, I've had enough of sitting behind you, Keiko Lepers. I'm going to go for a move. Looks to the outside there. Will he have the downforce in that Subaru to go the long way around? I don't think so. The Toyota, very, very quick, of course, 2019 and 2021 Manufacturers Cup and Series champion there. Here comes Subaru. Is it going to be a move in? No, not quite close enough for now. In the background as well, BMW have managed to depose of Nissan for third place. Meanwhile, at the front, it's two by two on the run in towards turn four. Oh, aggressive chop over there from Toyota. Subaru having to be forced around the outside in towards turn four. Surely, Jimmy, if the move's going to come, it's going to come in towards uh, turn ten into that hairpin bend. But Miyazono trying to invent something on the run down into five. Going to try and look the long way around. It's a very long way around down in that hairpin, though. You see just the, the agility of that Subaru, able to put the car uh, in places that Coke Lopez cannot. But now we're coming up to where the Toyota is strong, the back straight here. It's got a nice, uh, nearly 600 horsepower in this Toyota. It's so very, very fast down the back straight. Here we go then. One last right hand. Look at the difference in cornering speed through there. Able to carry a bit more speed now deep in the toe, deep in the slipstream. Coca Lopez tries to break the toe. I don't think we're quite close enough. Goes defensive anyway. I'm going to try and go around the long way around the outside with me. He's going to try and cut back now. Lopez sits on the apex and I don't think he's got enough time, Tom. He's so close through here. Coming through to the final sector then. Miyazono trying for the outside line here on Team Toyota, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it unless Coca Lopez makes a mistake. But he is holding firm for now. It surely will be a drag to the line as they come through the final couple of corners. Toyota versus Subaru, Lopez versus Miyazono. It's Lopez with the advantage through to the final turn in the qualifying race of the Manufacturers' Cup. It's a drag to the line, and who takes the checkered flag? It's Toyota by just a tenth of a second over Team Subaru. BMW finishing in third place ahead of Nissan, Genesis, Lamborghini, McLaren, Renault, Porsche, and Mazda inside the top ten. What brilliant racing everywhere you looked, up and down the field, and a fantastic final lap from Takuma Miyazono and from Koke Lopez, the winner for Team Toyota. I'm, I'm confused, Tom. Catalonia has consistently provided good racing this week. <laughs> it's been amazing. I mean, a, a big shout-out as well to Will Murdoch. Maybe a little bit of British bias there, but plus five, not, not bad for Team Lamborghini there. So a good job.
from him. But of course, the story of the race really is uh, BMW and this, and that was going the entire time. Matteo Estevez did a great job defending for the most part, but couldn't quite keep BMW behind in the end. So here's where that fight started. Yeah, let's have a look and see if we can piece together what happened. This is going into the uh, first lap. You can see here BMW uh, just in front. This is the drag down to the start finish uh, straight at the start of the second lap. McLaren versus Renault in towards turn one. Latest on the brakes. McLaren had the inside line at this point. Renault trying to firm it around the outside. This is where it all went wrong for Team Porsche into the side of Honda. Biffs it into the side of uh, Mercedes. As a result of that, they picked up a two second penalty, which put them on the back foot. Eventually, they would finish in ninth position at the end of the race, which is exactly where they qualified, so no forward progress. There was, however, forward progress for Will Murdoch in the Lamborghini, 11th on the grid, and they made fantastic ascension through the field as we watch this battle unfolding for the final podium place. In this sound of BMW, are pretty much inseparable for the entire race. You see here, um, just trying a Suzuki, trying to find a way around Mateo Estevez. There's no way around, really great defensive driving, but unfortunately for Estevez, eventually they got just that a little bit closer. Renault and Genesis had a great battle as well. Genesis with Anika Romero there, um, putting the car up into fifth eventually. So a good run from him in Team Genesis. Here finally was the move between BMW and this and BMW looking the long way around, just about had the overspeed into T1. Late breaking, Mateo Espes didn't give it up though, but on the second part of the corner, didn't have the inside line there. BMW a bit rude in the way through, but to be honest, that's racing. A, a good overtake from me. Yeah, Sai Suzuki getting that one done. It was a drag to the line though for the race victory between Toyota and Subaru. Eventually, Koke Lopez taking that by just a tenth of a second. What a fantastic final lap it was between the two Japanese manufacturers. It does mean that Toyota will start the grand final on pole position. Here are the results from the qualifying race then. Toyota, Koke Lopez take the spoils ahead of Subaru. BMW in third place ahead of Nissan, Genesis, Lamborghini, McLaren, Renault, Porsche, Mazda, Mercedes, Maya there down in 11th position. And Team Honda, Penny for their thoughts as well in 12th position at the checkered flag. Anyway, that's all done and dusted. We know the grid now for the grand final. Let's head over to Julia, who is with Koke Lopez, the winning driver from Team Toyota. Well, that seemed nice and that seemed quite comfortable. And, you know, we barely saw you, uh, you know, until pretty much the end of the race. How was that drive for you? Uh, well, I was just trying to replicate and do the same basically as I did yesterday in Toyota Cup semi-final. Yes, I was with Takuma behind instead of Josete, and yeah, it worked well. I knew he was saving a bit the tires to try to overtake me in the last couple of laps. I also knew that actually first or second for the grand final is not a big difference uh, because of the dynamic weather, you know, uh, it, will all, it will also depend on, the, on how we manage the nerves. And yeah, I've tried to defend to try to get the victory for the Spanish crowd as well. And thanks a lot to them for their support. I mean, you knew obviously that Miyazono was going to come for you, but you just kept like nice and calm all the way through, and like so, you're a little bit of fighting, but nothing too crazy. That was quite calm. Well, that's maybe what it looked like. Maybe. <laughs> I think uh, while I was watching the gap every straight, uh, the gap with the P3, I was uh, watching that it was just increasing every lap. So I knew Miyazono San wouldn't try to overtake me to not let them catch us again. And yeah, at that point I was calm. I also tried to save a bit my tires, but in the end it was a bit, a bit stressful because I know even if Toyota is very good on straight, Subaru is really impressive on the corner. So I knew I would, I would have to defend the inside with all what I got. I mean, well done for you, obviously representing your team. Um, are you gonna, I, I presume you've already come up with your strategy maybe for the grand final? Are you gonna change it up? No, you don't have to tell us what it is, because that, you don't wanna tell everyone, but like, have you, are you gonna change it up, do you think, for the grand final, what do you reckon? <sighs> Uh, it will depend on how weather looks like before the start of the race. Mm. Uh, we just know which tire uh, will drive each of, our, of us or in, in Toyota team, and from then just try to do everything depending on what the competitors do. No? Uh, try to get the best of our potential. I think it's very huge. We will just struggle a bit on the rain condition if it rains, but I think we are ready to try to fight for the victory. Of course, you reckon they're going to do it? What do you guys think? Yeah? Yo creo que no están entendiendo mucho la mayoría. All right, well, it's time we find out. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Jules. Very much looking forward to that grand final after a fantastic qualifying race. Couldn't really ask for more there, could we? And like I said in the booth, I'm, I'm quite confused that Catalonia's given us such good racing, <laughs> but um, <laughs> awesome to see what we have in store, of course. That's just a little taster of what we've got coming up for the grand final. Yeah, absolutely. Let's shift our attention over to the uh, Nations Cup, which is taking place here tomorrow night as well. Don't forget to join us for that because 
Well, Team Spain, they took the win in the World Series showdown. Coke Lopez, whatever he seems to touch at the moment, it turns to gold. I'm going to buy a lottery ticket off him tonight. I bet the Toyota wraps the other day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a good time, definitely. Let's have a look at the starting grid then for this grand final. So you can see Team Toyota will start on pole position. Uh, Rikuto Kobayashi ahead of Coke Lopez with Adriano Carazza in the mix there as well. Uh, you've got Team Subaru in second place with Team BMW in third. Nissan Genesis Lamborghini elevator themselves from 11th on the grid at that qualifying to 6th position. Work to do though, Jimmy, for Porsche, Mazda, Mercedes, Honda, all names we're expecting to be fighting sort of up the sharper end. Yeah, definitely. You know, this uh, strategy is going to come into play here, I think, and maybe, uh, you know, we've, uh, we, we've heard things about today's race, and I, I, I've got a feeling that it's not going to be as simple as just put a guy in the car and drive to the end. But as you say, uh, Honda there, right at the back of the grid. AMG, we're used to seeing them usually in the top five, so starting P11 for them is uh, not going to be, uh, not going to be where they want to be. Yeah, absolutely. And now going over to the grand final, let's have a look, shall we, for the first time at the circuit the drivers will be competing on. It's the Nordschleife, the 24-hour layout. Group three cars once again. But as you can see crucially there, racing medium, intermediate and heavy wet tyres, a possibility of some inclement weather coming in for this one, Jimmy. How on earth are the drivers going to manage this and work out their strategy? <laughs> it's, a it's a real tough one. You might tell I'm a bit of a fan of this circuit. I like this track a little bit. Have you raced there before? Oh, I don't mention you've that. Never, you've never spoken about, about, about it. <laughs> never talking about it before. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the worst things that can really happen when you're there uh, and racing is suddenly you're hit by just a shower out of nowhere. When you're on slick tyres, especially on these Group 3 machines of all that downforce, all that power, it's pretty spooky when you hit a damp patch. So yeah. it's going to be a take, take all our drivers still today. It certainly is. Don't forget, you can get involved in the action as well. We want you to vote and predict who you think is going to win. This is how it sits at the moment before the grand final. 28.2% of you think Subaru is going to win. 26.5% for Toyota. 11.4% for Team Porsche. I have to say, after Porsche's performance in that first race, I wonder uh, how much of an opportunity they've got because they're going to be down in ninth place on the grid. That's a good chunk of the vote there, just for free teams. So yeah, you guys definitely have uh, decided who you like there. But uh, I'm not quite sure who, who, who the favourite is here. And it's hard to say. I mean, of course, we know Team Super, we know Team Toyota are very quick indeed. Team Porsche won, uh, of course, last time out in yeah. Amsterdam. So uh, a lot of very fast teams here. But uh, what about a bit of an outside chance? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? You, the Nordschleife is a very unpredictable track, and it really does punish those who try to mistreat it, shall we say. <laughs> I to mistreat her. I like that. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> let's get ready then, shall we, and get the 12 teams on to the stage ahead of the grand final for the Manufacturers' Cup for the 2023 Gran Turismo World Finals. We'll do them in reverse order. Please welcome from Team Honda. It is from Japan, Suki Nabati. Uh, then you've got Valerio Gallo from Italy and Jao Pessoa from Brazil. The 11 team making their way onto the grid from a team Mercedes AMG. It's Lucas Benelli, Tomo Aki, Yamanaka, and Baptiste Beauvoir. <laughs> Lining up 10th on the grid for the grand final. It's Team Mazda from Spain, Paul Yura from Japan, Hiroshi Okamoto. And for the United States of America, it's Robbie Heck. Work to do for Team Porsche from ninth on the grid. Missing a driver, of course. Please welcome onto the stage from Chile, Angel and Estroza. And from Spain, Jose Serrano. Eighth on the grid will be Team Renault. Please welcome from Australia, Guy Barbara. From Brazil, Artemoso. And from Spain, Alex Lopez. Team McLaren, seventh on the grid for the grand final. Please welcome from the USA, Donovan Parker. From Greece, Konstantinos Konstantinou. And from Japan, Koke Mizuno! <laughs> Sixth on the grid for Team Lamborghini. From the UK, Will Murdoch. From the USA, Randall Hayward. And from Japan, Yuki Kodaka! A 
top five starting position for Team Genesis. From the USA, it's Dean Held. From Japan, Yutio Sasaki. And from Spain, it's Nico Romero! Second row of the grid for Team Nissan. Please welcome from Japan, Ryuta Kokoban, Mehdi Hafidi from France, and from Argentina, it's Mateo Estevez! <laughs> Third on the grid for Team BMW. Please welcome from the USA, Kalen Roach, from Japan, Saya Suzuki, and from France, Thomas Le Boutelet! Second on the grid for Team Subaru. Please welcome from Japan, Takuma Miyazono. From Brazil, Roberto Sternberg. And from France, it's Kylian Drummond! <laughs> Pole position for the grand final in the Manufacturers' Cup for Team Toyota. Please welcome from Brazil, Adriano Carazza. From Japan, Ryuta Kokoban. And from uh, Spain, it is Coque Lopez! <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, we now ask you to please stand if you're able for the national anthem of our host nation here in Spain. just suggest that you take a quick look at our 35 drivers shoes gloves and caps just take a quick look over there now you may remember that in 2022 we showed some lovely racing overalls imagined by Dior men's artistic director Kim Jones for Gran Turismo 7 well Dior's collaboration with Gran Turismo continues and our drivers are kitted out with new driving gloves featuring the number 47 as a tribute to Christian Dior's first show in 1947 now, as well as the gloves, they have some pretty cool special Dior racing shoes and a cap too. Now, I like the looks of this. Now, is anyone here a size five? So, you know, maybe a 37 euro, because um, yeah, I might, I might have that. Please stand by. Uh, maybe okay. I think I will do another lap and I go to bed for the hands. Being on a team, you have more pressure, yeah. Sorry, guys, sorry. That's okay. You kept the toe, it's probably faster. If you have three solid drivers, you have a really good shot. There can't really be a weak link. Come on, McLaren, accelerate for speed. Anything can change on race to race. Oh, oh no. But the team mate to no communication mo tori nagara no koto kara hajimatte. So kara do itta senne wo totte ikuno wa ma muskashi in janai ga na. Who was that? It's not all the time easy to make uh, the right decision. Stay off the wet stuff. Follow the line. Rain is very slow at coming. Pues yo en mi caso intento no distraerle, intento hablarle en en la recta que no hay ninguna curva para para que esté concentrado en lo que tiene que estar concentrado. I think it will rain for the rest of the race. We go full wet. Yeah. Having the team radio on is definitely going to be a, a new experience. I'm going to talk my head off. You couldn't do it. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Chant, 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 chant. Cars are not equal. You never know what the team capable of. You have to be ready at any moment to take the wheel to replace your teammate. I 
I do feel quite confident. What I always seek is winning. Pumped up and ready to go for this one. It's time for the grand final of the Manufacturers' Cup here in Barcelona. It is going to be hugely exciting, Jimmy. The Nordschleife is a circuit, as we know, that doesn't take any prisoners. What are the sort of key elements that go fast around here? You've done a fair few laps this year yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those circuits I think is just, first of all, quite intimidating <laughs> when you're just driving just on your own. When you're driving with a pack of other drivers, some of the best GT drivers in the world, it can be one of the most insane experiences, I think, in esports anywhere, really. I mean, I had the pleasure myself of actually driving around it uh, and trying to find maybe some areas to focus on. It's a very difficult circuit to go around. So, first of all, we started with hats and back. Because at the start of the Nord Life, just after the GP circuit, this is where you want to start building your rhythm on that northern loop. The GP circuit is quite open, quite flowing. There is space to make mistakes. Here there isn't. You make a mistake here, you're going to end up in the barrier, um, which uh, is not it. <laughs> I can tell you that for free, but uh, very important to build that rhythm through here. And now coming through at Bergwerk, very important to get a good exit up here. If you mess up this right-hander here, you carry the mistake for a very long time. It's an uphill acceleration zone. You can see this Jay Broadbent character not quite doing it perfectly, um, but, you know, he'll get there eventually. Now we have one of the most iconic corners on the circuit, the carousel. Use that concrete. That's where the grip is. That's where the camber is. Chuck the car in. It will stick. Use it to get a better exit out of the corner and to have well, a better run through the corner in general. Now we come to one of the most crucial parts of the circuit. This is the Dottinger Herd. See back straight, the, one of the longest straights in motor racing. And this is a great opportunity for slipstream. Get a good exit onto here, get close to the cars near to you and use that toe all the way down the straight. And that's uh, one of the easiest ways to overtake around it. If you can stay close enough, it's, uh, it's not as easy as it looks. No, it is going to be a very tall order for these drivers. Don't forget, of course, you can get involved in the action here tonight. Predict the winner is what we want you to do in the Manufacturers' Cup for 2023. And, of course, the Michelin driver of the day will be announcing that in the press conference after the event as well. So keep an eye out on a particular driver in a particular team that's caught your eye and you thought, goodness me, they have done really very, very well. And, uh, well, you never know. You could end up being featured in this as well. And, of course, our bonus campaign to predict the winner. You can win a million in-game credits if you can do that before the start of the grand final. So you've literally only got a couple of minutes left to do it. If my girlfriend is watching, please turn on the PS5 and predict for us. <laughs> we need some credits, please. Exactly, you want to buy tuning parts off of, uh, <laughs> yeah. off of Rupert for your car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I need, more, so. need more GTR parts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to this one, though. Of course, strategy is going to be the first uh, thing to consider in this race as well. As we saw in the track details earlier on, we've got mediums, intermediates and wet tyres. There's a good possibility of inclement weather, which isn't far from the truth at the Nordschleife. I mean, the thing you look at the circuit anyway you think oh actually no i don't want to do that and then you add in wet weather as well it becomes a whole new challenge especially if it's a progressively wet or progressively drying circuit there's a dry line you've got to try and follow and not all patches dry equally as well so um yeah we're basically giving these guys the toughest challenge we can think of because we're, we're nice here aren't we? oh yeah exactly <laughs> that well let's get ready then shall we it is time for the grand final of the manufacturers cup in 2023 we're about ready to find out which of our teams will be crowned as the champion it's gonna be five laps at the nurburgring winner takes all stakes who will take the crown this season <laughs> ready to go then for the grand final of the Manufacturers' Cup in the Gran Turismo World Series. And we were talking about inclement weather. It started wet already. Now, this is going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons because the drivers have had no idea what the conditions are going to do. And how on earth do you think?
figure this one out. Starting for Team Toyota, it is Rakuto Kobayashi. For Subaru, Takuma Miyazono, wet weather specialist, he is. Alongside on the second row of the grid, you've got Thomas Laboutile for BMW, Nissan, Medi Hafidi at the wheel. Row three of the grid, it's Genesis and Yuki Sasaki. Next up on the grid, it is Lamborghini Randall Hayward behind the wheel of the Lamborghini Huracan. McLaren Donovan Parker takes the helm from the United States. Renault Guy Barbara at the wheel. He was quick in the snow yesterday. Can he translate that to a good performance in the wet? Jose Serrano for Porsche in ninth. Mazda with Robbie Heck at the helm in 10th position. The final row of the grid, Tomoaki Yamanaka in 11th position. And Honda Valerio Gallo will start the charge for the Japanese mark in 12th position. All of them going on the intermediate compound of tyre here, Jimmy, for the kickoff. Yeah, I mean, it, there is, it's raining right now. And there is water down uh, on the grid. The weather radar isn't, but uh, there's still rain just from the start. Um, but it dries out very slowly. So you might have to do two laps. See, Team BMW, they're already trying to figure out what tyres to be on, but it is bright. It is bright there. And as I say, it's not raining, it's just a damp circuit. So I think after a couple of laps, it might dry out. But we'll have to wait and see. Team Toyota will be the first people exploring the conditions. Yeah, this is going to be hugely exciting to see what happens. In 2022, it was Team Subaru who took the crown the first time we've seen a manufacturer taking the double in the Manufacturer's Cup. Can they make it a triple here this evening, or will Team Toyota reign supreme? What about the likes of BMW? Nissan, Genesis, Lamborghini, it is all to play for. Unpredictable conditions, five laps of action at the Nürburgring 24-hour layout. Three drivers, only one can be crowned as the world champion as we get ready and go racing. The grand final for the Manufacturer's Cup is underway here at the Nordschleife. Toyota leading the field across the timing line from Subaru, from BMW into the braking zone of the Castrol as we go for the first time. Any moves being made there? Genesis having a look on the inside. Nissan versus BMW further behind there as well. Nissan being shuffled out wide. Genesis also in some strife. Renault and Guy Barbara sliding their way round turn two and turn three and dropping a position to McLaren in the opening couple of corners. A good start for the Americans. Randall Hayward for Lamborghini and Robbie Heck up two places in that Mazda at the moment. So we're going to start for those guys. Uh, AMG uh, Mercedes fighting at the back as well. But everyone just trying to feel out the grip at the moment. It's uh, a difficult situation. There's no one knows how much grip there is. And Team Subaru there already going for the move. Mia's owner, of course, very good in these conditions. Looking around the outside of his fellow countryman Kobayashi looking for the cutback now, trying to use the drive out of the corner. But the, on that dry line there, it's still slippery. You can see there the Subaru struggling for traction out the corner. Team Nissan, Hafidi has got by uh, BMW Labu today there up in 2P3. We know what that Nissan's like. You don't want to be behind that going on to the North Cypher. It's not quite as quick through the corners as some of these cars behind. Look at the distance though, the circuit, it's uh, very wet at the moment, as you can see with the rain coming down. But there are blue skies and Team Toyota there. A little bit wide, Kobe Ashi just exploring the limits on the outside. I wonder whether that was intentional or not, or whether he's struggling with grip in the opening sort of half a lap or so. We're on the Grand Prix loop at the moment. You'll know this, of course, if you watched Formula One uh, for a good number of years, but we're about ready to head on to the North Life, where we're overtaking opportunities are fairly far and few in between. And look who's up into P4, Tom. Lamborghini, a great start from them. Plus two on that grid. Randall Hayward doing fantastic in these difficult conditions. And again, it goes to show, oh, big sideways moment there from Kobe Ashi. And then you see the Nissan trying the long way around. He's going to try and cut back now on the Subaru. Great trash out of the corner. Afidi might get Miyazona here. Again, looking to try and do the same thing coming through the Sabine Schmitz curve. And the Subaru all out of sorts. Afidi up onto the curb as well. No traction out there. But Miyazono struggling on the first part of the Nordschleife like here. And that's allowed the cars behind to catch as well. Well, the rain is certainly coming down, as you can see. And these intermediate tyres are going to have a. a useful shelf life as it stands at the moment. If the rain continues falling in an intensity and standing water becomes an issue, that's when you'll need the wet tyres. Sliding is Rakuto Kobayashi, Subaru and Miyazono looking a little bit on the back foot here. Hafidi has had a couple of nibbles already, but is he going to be able to have the full bite of things as we come through in towards the flagfoot section? Lamborghini signalling their intentions now all over the rear wing of Nissan and up through into third place as it stands for now. Around the outside there went Randall Hayward and up through into the podium places. So, the mid-engine Lamborghinis, no problem with uh, traction or grip at all at this stage in the race. It's only early doors, but they've managed to make up three places from where they qualified. Great start to the race for them. There's seemingly no stopping this early charge here from Randall Hayward. As you say, plus three, and now looking onto the back of Takuma Miyazona. Now, Toyota uh, with Kobayashi, they've pulled 
away a little bit through that, that first section there through Hudson back. And I think that actually, it's fair to say, Amir's owner, who we sort of put down as a bit of a specialist in his position, is struggling quite a bit. Hayward now within a couple of attempts behind. So going defensive now is to Team Super. Hayward looking to the inside. Can he make a move stick there? Around the outside comes Mirzono down towards the foxhole for the first time. Very much one a time down here, but look at all that spray is being kicked up. This is one of the downsides. We're on board now with Haywood in that Lamborghini. You can see the spray being kicked up by the Subaru in front. It doesn't help visibility around here. Lots of commitment through here, relying on that downforce almost into the no. corner. Oh, it's a moment. He's into the barrier, just got onto the slippy part of the circuit. And a great first lap from Haywood, unfortunately, comes to an end in the barrier. What a shame for Lamborghini. That is disappointing there for Randall Haywood after a quite fantastic start. And now he's got all of that hard work to do all over again. The one crumb of comfort he can have is that the field is all still bunched up on this opening lap. The problem is that, as we said, overtaking opportunities are far and few in between. And what was that? Just one wheel dipped onto the wet grass, lost a bit of traction, lost a bit of grip, straight to the scene of the accident. And that's how quickly the Nürburgring can bite. Yeah, it's all, it all just compounds around here. One mistake at one corner equals two mistakes at the corner after, pretty much. That's how it builds anyway. Um, in that, we'll talk about uh, uh, Team Honda, but we are watching. Oh, actually saying that, it's a bit of action here between Genesis, who run wide and get taken by McLaren and by Renault. Will Honda get them as well, who are there? Valerio Gallo started that car from the back of the grid. Oh, we have to PA in the background. AMG sliding, trying to control as Team Lamborghini and Randall Hayward trying to recover after his instance. So here's a replay of what happened to Randall Hayward. Let's have a look again. Comes around over the crest on the left-hander. Yeah, just a bit offline, and the car starts to rotate, hasn't got enough room to recover it, and into the barrier he goes. Yeah, big shame there for Randall Hayward and for Team Lamborghini. Be keen to see what their recovery is going to be like. It does release a bit of pressure there for Nissan now, who inherited third position as a result of that. We saw a bit of an on-screen graphic a few moments ago from uh, Caelan Roach, the American driver, who is one of uh, the members of Team BMW, saying that the BMW struggles greatly in the wet, so they are hoping that it won't rain. Of course, it is now raining. They're sitting in fourth place, so you would imagine, given what he said, that it's damage limitation at this particular point in the race. If the rain does stop and the uh, track begins to dry out, I would have to say that they will begin to get a little bit faster. Speaking of the rain stopping, it's not falling down now. The track is wet, but there is no rain coming from the sky. It's just standing water that's clearing, or is it actually, as a matter of fact, I can see some water on the ground, so ignore that. Lamborghini now on the recovery against Team Honda. So Randall Hayward having to get his elbows out on Valerio Gallo. Side by side, they go. We're heading towards the carousel section of this lap, and Lamborghini happily to depose Honda of eighth place for now. Next target is Genesis and Renault, who are involved in their own squabble in front, and that might just draw them back to the Lamborghini as it sits for the time being. Genesis holding into sixth place ahead of Guy Barbara in the Renault, who just dip a wheel onto the outside of the circuit, and that drops them back as well here. Oh, goodness me, Genesis now with BMW in front, Team Radio. Gallo behind to twitch your head. OK. Twitchy there being uh, Guy Barber in the Renault, of course, as uh, on board from Team Genesis. Renault there with a penalty and a mistake colliding with another car. So the stewards taking a dim view of their early antics as we go into the carousel Nissan trying the long way around. Now, I was saying, use the uh, you see the concrete there, usually you do it in the wet as well. It's quite grippy down there, and Team Subaru, a mistake, so between Toyota, a mistake. Our leader has gone from, from nowhere down to P12. What happened there? We just missed that. So a mistake from Kobayashi there has cost Toyota everything. Here's the replay. So this is into the carousel. He's going to loop it round, isn't he? Going back onto the, onto the concrete. Yeah, just lights the rear tyres up, spins it round. It's such a slow... Sorry. No worries. Yeah. Kobe Ashley there, disappointed, but still the support of his teammates saying, no worries, just get your head down and now try and refocus on the rest of this race. So this is going to be absolutely critical for uh, Team Toyota to make ground as they as much as they can now. Lamborghini on the recovery now, up at the sixth place now, challenging for Genesis for fifth position. There was a bit of hip and shoulder going through there. Genesis got shuffled out wide. Honda picked their pocket also. So Genesis now down into seventh place. Lamborghini and Honda through into fifth and sixth, respectively. Just showing how challenging this Races. Bear in mind, there is Team Subaru and there is Haywood, who was in the barrier big time half a lap ago, and now he's within uh, the sight again of the lead cars. So these mid engine cars seemingly uh, doing very well in these conditions of coming back through the field. We're on board now with Haywood as we come uh, through one of the fastest parts of the circuit through Flanscar and there. You take off in the dry, you probably won't do in the wet. And now through the Stefan Bell off very, very quick 
through here. It's one at a time at the moment, and you're pretty much relying on the car in front of you not to have a crash if you run this close. And McLaren there in front, you see a little bit slower through there. We're still on board with Paywood carrying the BMW in front. Mazda giving a zero second penalty, so I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but we'll come back to that in a second. And McLaren now under fire from BMW as almost we run into the back of Team BMW here. Now we're going to come through the Kleiner carousel and come to one of the most important parts of the circuit, which is the back straight of Dr. Hur. And this is a great opportunity to use that draft, use that of uh, sip stream. And the cars with big straight line speed advantages are going to do well. So watch the Nissan down the straight on the Subaru. You can see there, manufacturer cup rules. Drivers will be penalised for any of the following. Mazda did actually get a one second penalty following that. Now onto the Dr. Hur for the first time. This is where Slipstream City will begin to come into effect. We're coming towards the end of lap one, and I wonder whether any drivers are going to be thinking about boxing. The thing is, they've got to time it right in terms of strategy. They must uh, not do more than three laps consecutively, three drivers uh, per team, but for Team Porsche. As we come down this long straight, Subaru going to be a bit of a sitting duck here to Team Nissan. It's Miyazono versus Havidi. Havidi's going to pull to the inside and surely go past their fellow compatriot manufacturer as they come towards the end of this straight. It's going to be a bit of hip and shoulder very close up the rise through the left and then the right Subaru not giving any quarter but oh that was so tight through there but Nissan do manage to get themselves ahead and Lamborghini now up to third place as well that's a brilliant dotting of her uh, straight for them because they managed to let themselves right up the order. So we come to the end of the first lap and we're still separated by pretty much nothing up and down the entire field. There they all are now coming down the main straight to the GP circuit. Randall Hayward looking to the inside for uh, maybe P2 here on Takuma Miyazono into the GP circuit, into the hairpin. Takes second away but very wide down the bottom in front. Nissan makes a mistake. Off goes Nissan, loses the lead down to third place and Miyazono just getting that braking zone right down towards T1, takes the lead back and it just shows you how tricky these conditions are. They're changing lap by lap, and it's still very wet out there. This is the right tyre to be on for now, but that could all change come next lap. That mistake in the first corner there for Nissan, Constantine the whole field up, and look at them now. McLaren all over their gearbox. Donovan Parker, who's behind the wheel of that machine, looking to try and find his way through. Genesis with uh, Yuto Sasaki behind the wheel. Laboutele and BMW also ready to try and take profit. Are we going to see a change of lead as we come in towards the hairpin? But Lamborghini looking to the outside to be a brave driver. They can do that. Can they make that? stick that will be inspired if they can Subaru gonna get back through they're gonna try and rough it out on the outside we're side by side as we come up towards the Michael Schumacher S Lamborghini and Randall Haywood taking the lead on lap two what a fantastic overtake if he can just keep it on the road now Haywood is gonna rock it away from these guys he's been off the road he's been down to ninth place he's come straight back through the field now and within half a lap he's now leading and look who's back in the fray again this hand are back and they are first Rated. Havidi led the race coming on to the GP circuit, made a mistake down into T1, but now it's locked back onto that rear spoiler of the Subaru. You couldn't have three more different cars. The Lamborghini mid-engine, the car behind the Subaru, small, agile. The Nissan, in comparison, a bit of a turbo brick and a twitch there from Subaru and Miyazona trying to get through the chicane. And now we come on to the Nürburgring proper. Welcome back to the Nordschleife for the Northern Loop. And this is where I think Lamborghini are really going to be able to stretch their legs, as Tom points out there, blue sky. Yeah, and the sun is beginning to come out. The track is going to begin to dry. Team Radio for Nissan. Who's driving for Subaru? Yeah. Oh, OK, makes sense. <laughs> makes sense, what's that mean? <laughs> uh, well, it's Medi Hamidi, isn't it, that uh, uh, is driving for Nissan. So, right, the sun has come out. Now, that's going to change the complexion of this one. I reckon we could see some drivers coming to box at the end of this lap. It's a very long way to go until then. Let's have a look at the replay of what happened down to T1. Nissan going to outbreak themselves. Lamborghini are going to go off following their line. Look at that, just an armful of understeer. Lamborghini going off in sympathy but managing to pick their pocket. Subaru say thanks very much and get the supermarket deal. Two for the price of one, but themselves have a slide on the exit of the, fir of the first corner. And then what that did was concertina the rest of the field up and they were all just sort of tippy-toeing around the second turn look though jimmy the track's beginning to dry out there's a dry line already beginning to appear at certain parts yeah because the patchy bits on circuit there and that's what the drivers are going to be aiming for that's when it's going to be a little bit more grip than the wet surface we're, we're seeing history right now on merit lamborghini is leading a manufacturer's cup grand final race but only just behind team super team nasa and there they are just flying by great shots here as spray being kicked up by the cars coming down now to Arenberg, big braking zone down here. 
who's best on the anchors this and you see the dry line on the outside there you could try and utilize that Lamborghini staying ahead for now though Mazda having had a brilliant uh, second lap as well they've got themselves up into fifth place so that's really good driving from Robbie Heck who's at the helm of that car you can see in the background there you've got Porsche uh, who are going side by side with Mercedes BMW in the mix there as well at the front is a four-way tussle for position as Lamborghini still lead from Subaru from Nissan from Genesis but there's not much of a gap that's beginning to appear from behind if anything that gap is beginning to disappear now and it's no sale running the largest gap we've got on track between 12 different teams is six tenths of a second and that's McLaren off the back of the field so that just goes to show how tight this race is so the racing is frantic would be an understatement here comes Team Nissan trying to get by uh, Subaru around the outside won't get the move done there but just show look at all these cars all just separated by no time until Team Nissan lunge up the inside up into P2 goes Afidi taking back the position from Mia's own he took at the end of the last lap and now he's going to try and hunt down Randall Hayward who I must say hasn't pulled away in the way that I thought he was he's got a bit of a gap now thanks to the overtake look at that snake of cars there it looks like AI they're so close the thing is Jimmy that of course it's all well a good Lamborghini being fast in the wet there's no guarantee that that pace is going to translate to the dry as well so if the circuit does continue to dry out as we're expecting it to there's no rain that looks like it's on the horizon at the moment the skies are blue the sun is out at certain parts of the circuit that Lamborghini though it's quick in these conditions it might not be so and then you might see the likes of Nissan Lamborghini perhaps even some other cars the Toyota the BMW perhaps then being faster as the track begins to change in terms of its conditions here come Mercedes look to the inside of Genesis the background is some bracing going on there some very close uh, uh, between the Mercedes AMG Toyota trying to make their way back up the grid after the, uh, the spin at the carousel earlier on I was gonna say Tom that end of a slap comes a million dollar question they have to pit end of a slap here's a replay this is team Mazda on the Porsche coming down the hill here up down towards Arenberg from Schrader and Kreutzer very very fast left-hander Mazda there takes both of them in a straight line two for one thank you very much that RX vision very quick down the straight beautiful bit of driving there in the uh, Mazda then for, to, uh, for Robbie Heck just to go back to what I was saying sorry Tom but they're gonna have to pit end of a stuff they have to they have to change drivers and they're, they're gonna have to probably change tires so do you stay on the inters or do you go on to uh, a slick compound i think given how that track is drying up you just chance it on a slick you have to look at mazda here on subaru as well two japanese manufacturers going two to two contact off onto the grass there for mazda that's going to put them under threat here from genesis who say thanks very much and slip themselves up into fourth position they look at the front two they're just rocking away yeah. now nearly two seconds now over uh, third and there's now a massive dry line they're gonna have to come in now at the end of a lap for slick tires if you're out on intermediate you're gonna burn up you're gonna be slow so all the drivers down there you can see a, a flurry of activity behind the drivers at the moment here at a live event in barcelona one of the great things about these uh, in-person events and uh, I, I don't want to be in their shoes right now i'm quite <laughs> glad to be here in the commentary booth to be honest yeah it really is gonna be frantic and well let's see what the drivers will do in terms of of uh, the pit stops they'll all be going on to the dry tires surely because look at that the dry line very very evident now those intermediates are going to be cooking themselves uh, to a crisp as we come through uh, past the carousel section and this is where the sort of halfway points of this lap is Porsche picking up a one second penalty team radio for Renault Twitchy what tire do you think mm, I'll lay it out towards the end of the lap but it could be another long it could be one on intermediates so there's yeah, Guy Barber who's behind started. Sorry, that's Guy Barber who's behind the wheel of that car at the moment, wondering what the team are going to do in terms of tyres and strategy. So, uh, Renault down 11th place for now. They've got a bit of work to do to get themselves up in the uh, fighting positions for the podium. Look at the determination on the face of Robbie Heck. He is really trying to make the most of this last half a lap, this last sector of the course. Look at the mirror to the right-hand side. Look how close the AMG is. A fire-breathing V8 breathing down the neck of this rotary uh, monster in front. And now, what are we going to we gonna see from Robbie Heck? We know the car's put down the straight, so he might be able to use the tow from the Genesis and Subaru and maybe get a bit of a slingshot. Meanwhile, Lamborghini and Nissan are putting away uh, exponentially. Two seconds is a gap now through there. There's Mazda being pretty much pushed along by that V8 behind Team Toyota there as well. Look at that. Five cars in a blink of an eye. You wouldn't even know there were five cars uh, in that little fray there. And now we're going to come on to the back straight. Team Super just not holding on, but we know that first bit of acceleration zone it just doesn't quite have the grunt. Look at them. We can throw a blanket over these four drivers as it stands for now. They're all aiming for that, though. That is the Manufacturer's Cup trophy that one team will be lifting here tonight. But who is it going to be? Will we see a repeat winner or will we see a first-time winner? At the moment, if the checkered flag fell, it would be Lamborghini who would be crowned as the champions. But there is ever such a long way to go. 
though, Nissan have closed the gap right up. Many Hafidi on the back as well. We're going to see some driver changes at the end of this lap two. And uh, out of the Lamborghini will go uh, Randall Hayward, who's been behind the wheel. Will, it, will we see the likes of Will Murdoch getting behind the uh, wheel of that machine, or will it be their other driver of Yuki Kadaka? They must use each driver at least once. Team Radio again from uh, Renault. We have to take the risk. We have to take the risk. Yes. It's got to be six, hasn't it? It's got to be medium tyres at this point. It's the only risk they can take. The only six available are the mediums. Here comes Team Nissan on the back of Lamborghini. Will they go through a very risky part of the circuit to do so? Uh, think, think about it. No. Big lunge there, the last part of the braking zone. And then bam, onto the, drum, the wet part of the circuit. Just about getting by. Good move by Nissan, but they're going to come into the box now. They all want trap position, do they? Coming up the pit lane. That's the crucial thing. That's why Mediafini was so desperate to get ahead of Lamborghini. So every team is going to come into the box at the end of this one. Now they're surely going to go onto the slick tyres. Though we saw some parts of the circuit have still got a little bit of standing water, the risk is if you stay on those intermediate tyres, they're going to just chew themselves up. They must hit at least one more time in this race, and everybody going for the medium compound. No surprise there at all. I suppose that does mean it's a bit of a moot point because every team is now in the same boat at least. But the question is, are the teams that were quick in the wet conditions going to have that same level of performance as the track is now beginning to dry out? The, the track hasn't completely dry, though, as all the cars squabble for position down towards the hairpin for the first time. I think Lambo just got launched by the Genesis behind. Oh, what a shame for Lamborghini losing places left, right and centre there. And they get crashed. I think I hit off a course out of just very, very slow out of that uh, hairpin. We'll see if we can get a replay of that. But the real winner is Team Genesis and Nico Romero, the Spanish driver, up in 2P2. And, of course, Fiota Kokobun, he now has a clear track and is two seconds clear. It's been a long time since you've seen this out at the sharp end of the Manufacturers' Cup. So uh, we, we see if that can continue for the rest of the race. Unsurprisingly, Lamborghini and Genesis are under investigation. Well, this is going to be very interesting to see how it works out in terms of penalties. Hopefully we get a replay of that. Nico Romero, it is the Spanish who is now behind the wheel of the Genesis X Group 3 machine. Subaru with Mazda breathing down their neck as they come through the S-Bend on the Grand Prix circuit. So Nissan, they've now got a nice comfortable cushion as it sits for now. And Cockerburn, he needs to do exactly what we know he can do, and that is try and continue building on that advantage over Genesis in second and Subaru in third. So the field will now begin to spread out, and I'm sure it will come to uh, a head later on in this race. You can see there the dry line as we get a bit of team radio from Genesis. Just take a breath, focus on the driving. Nothing can do better now. So that indicates to me that they think uh, Nico could have been possibly at fault for that first corner incident. Unsurprisingly, so do the stewards there. A one-second penalty, I think, there, given that. I mean, obviously, I don't think it was intentional. I think everyone's very bunched up, and uh, unfortunately, that Lamborghini, their race uh, went from very good to now looking so great down in 10th position. Meanwhile, uh, this fight uh, for second place is now between uh, Genesis, Subaru and Mazda, who we're on board with, Hiroshi Okimoto at the wheel of the Mazda rotary machine. Used to uh, be known for uh, driving that awesome VW Beetle, but VW not here, of course. Uh, the manufacturer's uh, cup didn't qualify. Let's see a replay of what happened, though, between Genesis and Lamborghini. So here's Genesis, Lambo in front, coming down to T1. And, I mean... Cold tyres, isn't it? One second for that. Like, that's absolutely ruined this race, I don't know. Um, but I think what happened is, uh, uh, as you say, a combination of cold tyres and being on that wet part of the circuit just locked up. Oh, Subaru. What's oh. happened to Subaru here? Then? They've dropped right down to ninth position now. They've clearly made a mistake behind the wheel was Roberto Sternberg, and he wasn't doing too badly at that point. So something has gone wrong for the Japanese manufacturer. We'll have to piece together exactly what's happened because they're now down in ninth or tenth, uh, ninth place it is. So uh, that race has sort of come undone a little bit for them. These are some of the most challenging conditions you can drive in right now, because you can see half the track is dry, half the track is wet, and the difference is on a slick tyre. If you touch that wet bit, you're just a passenger. You're going to go flying off. You saw it with Romero there, trying to avoid the Lamborghini, and I think that's probably what's happened with uh, Sternberg in the Subaru. Let's have a look. So we're coming down uh, on to the straight. Now, yep, just touches the wet bit, and around he goes. Nothing he can do. Yeah, you're just a passenger at that point. He got away from him. He tried to save it, corrected it, and then straight off into the wall for Team Subaru and Roberto Sternberg. Renault going to one second a penalty for colliding with another car so it's a plethora of penalties here on the third and a fifth lap so 
Team Mercedes AMG sitting in third position now. When was the last time we saw Mercedes on the podium? Uh, I'm going to have a look, and I believe actually it was the grand final here last year, actually. Uh, they were in third place then, but Mazda tried to do everything they can to take it away with uh, Okamoto behind the wheel of the RX Vision Gran Turismo Group 3 machine. Give you an idea of how chaotic this race has been. Nissan leading up three places. Genesis second to up three places from our starting position. Mercedes AMG up eight places from our starting position. Mazda up six places. Honda up seven. Insane. It really is. So let's see what these penalties are going to work out like. Genesis has got a one and a half second advantage over Mercedes and AMG, but of course the penalty zone, as we know, it's not the Dossi Gehur, it's the worst part yeah. of the circuit to serve a penalty, that massive long straight, because you don't only lose that one second or whatever the penalty is, you lose all of the time that you have lost because you've got the difference in straight line speed compared to all the other competitors around you. Given how close the field is, you could lose two, three, four places uh, for Genesis at the moment. Meanwhile, at the sharp end of the field, Riotta Kockerman is clearing off with this one. 3.4 seconds, the gap that Nissan have now over the rest of the field. This is quite a spectacular race for Nissan, considering uh, how it's been so far for them over the last couple of seasons. The thing is, with, with Riotta, we know how fast he is. He has so much pace, but it just seems recently he's not really had the luck or the, uh, I don't really know, maybe the brain's been in a bit of a different spot for him recently, but really today, he's putting in a great performance, one of the most difficult circuits in the world, in some of the most difficult conditions you can drive in. Uh, dry to wet, uh, sorry, a wet to dry circuit, whilst driving on slick tyres. Here comes Team Master though, on Team AMG. Will they be able to get by on the dry line without any sort of contact? They drive by Mercedes AMG in a straight line, and Team Master up into third position. So great move there by Okamoto. Now the question is, does he have the pace to catch the Genesis and try and get by and then of course look for the Nissan in front who's gapped the whole field now by three and a half seconds. Here comes Team BMW looking up the inside of the M6. Of course very successful here in real life. Right now struggling in the midfield though with Team Renault behind. So, Renault there sitting in eighth position, just up the road, BMW, Caelan Roach, the American driver, the rookie behind the wheel of that car, said that the car wasn't particularly brilliant in the wet conditions, but in the dry, that's where it begins to take advantage, and they're looking to the outside of Team Toyota, it's going to flick to the left hand, or are they going to try and send it through on the inside? It's very close as they run side by side, up the rise, through the hill, BMW versus Toyota, and BMW going through and taking sixth place away, oh, Toyota off onto the grass on the outside, Renault picks their pocket as well, it's going from bad to worse, for Toyota after such a promising start to their race. Just one mistake around is all it takes. This circuit is not forgiving. You go up here, you're going to have a bad time as you've seen so far. And now Mercedes AMG, that's uh, Lucas Benelli, is just pushing uh, Okamoto through. And I've just had a quick peek at our weather radar. Is more rain coming? Was that the rain that's just passed there on the top right hand corner? I'll well, keep an eye on that as things progress. But still, AMG on the back of Team Mazda. It looks like the rain's actually going away from the circuit there. So, a bit of a false alarm. I panicked there for these guys. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, not again. Well, don't get a job as a weather forecaster. Hey, Jimmy, stick to commentary. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. Uh, so, on board here with Mercedes AMG. Look at that over the right. Bang, down into that compression. This is coming in towards the final part of the lap. This is where Genesis are going to be serving that uh, one-second penalty. Renault also with the penalty, as we saw as well. And this is where it's going to really cost them dear. Nissan and Cockerman have increased that gap to some four and a half seconds at the sharp end. McLaren now picking up a penalty as well. One second for colliding with another car. There, Maya down in 11th place. Lamborghini down into 12th position. So it's going from bad to worse for Lamborghini from the sharp end of the field at the start of this lap all the way down into 12th place. A lot of work for them to do. Hero to zero stuff for the Italian manufacturer. A penny for the thoughts of their three drivers. So has Genesis and Nico Romero done enough to keep the position down the straight? I'm going to say probably not. It's a big penalty to get a penalty down here on the back straight. There is a penalty line in front. Nico Romero is going to put on the light. Slows down now. And here comes Mazda and here comes AMG, of course. There, no slowing down for them. They are rocketing towards the back of that Genesis and they're going to have the toe. There's nothing Think the Romero can do about it. He's going to lose one place, he's going to lose two places. Will he lose three places from that penalty there? Under there, just about latching onto the back now, still with the overspeed underneath the Bill Shine Bridge. We come now down towards the heavy braking zone. It's very much one a time through here. You don't want to be side by side and say that. Honda and Genesis are doing so. Honda up to P4 as well. So Genesis goes from P2 to P5 from that penalty. You see just how important it is to keep it clean around here. Master boxing after one lap.
Yeah, so they're coming into the pit lane then because, of course, they've got to. They've got to do a minimum of... Uh, uh, well, they've got to come into the pit lane because they want to get their next driver out at the end of this one. BMW and Toyota also in the box there as well as Subaru. So this is going to change the complexion of things because different strategies are beginning to emerge. Honda, let's not forget, started this race in the back of the grid. They were down in 12th position. They're up into fourth place and now harrying Genesis for the final podium position as we go on to the GP circuit once more at the beginning of lap four. So now, of course, Mazda really a contender here and in the car now gets Paul Yora, our Toyota Gazoo Racing GT Cup champion, funnily enough, of course, driving for Team Mazda today. But we know he's got pace, the home crowd behind him here as well. What can he do? Are they going to be capable of chasing down Team Nissan and Ryota Kokobun, who's just showing right now his experience? What speed we've seen from a Japanese driver over the course of the last couple of races. The gap, 6.6 .6 seconds down to Benelli, who Mercedes are up nine places from a starting position, but do they have the pace to catch up? That that, that time by, uh, Nissan were quicker, four seconds quicker than anybody else on that lap. Yeah, Kokobun's really dialed in. This is what we used to see from Kokobun, though. We've seen it in uh, World Series seen it in uh, previous top 16 superstars events as well that when Cockerman gets himself in clear air when he's not involved in squabbles in the rest of the field he's able to just get his head down drive clean laps and four seconds I know it doesn't sound like particularly a lot over an eight minute or so lap time but that is an incredible advantage and now their gap sits at 6.6 .6 seconds so barring a mistake or barring any kind of change in this race they look like they are in a very strong position at this particular point with uh, just over one and a half laps left to run so this is going to be really interesting to see whether Nissan are going to be able to take the crown as Genesis and Team Radio run Bonelli run <laughs> <laughs> He's basically, I think they're hoping to be dragged along by Bonelli in front so Romero may be just acknowledging that he's not quite got the pace or Maybe he does have the pace and wants to make sure that he's not held up here by the AMG drive in front. You hear tyres squealing there, just trying to find the grip. And Team Honda as well. Big shout out to those guys. Uh, Nabatani at the, uh, the wheel of the car at the moment. Uh, up eight spots from their starting, just from blasting the grid. And maybe a contender here for the end. But this man right now, Ryota Kokobun, as always, just cool as anything. Just doing what he needs to do, slowly building the gap. It's looking very good so far for Team Nissan. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what Kokobun is going to be able to continue doing uh, behind the wheel of that Nissan. Kokobun's uh, pace over this race has been nothing short of exemplary. The last time uh, we saw him take a win, by the way, in a World Series Manufacturers' Cup event was Paris, World Tour 1, uh, race 2. That was how long ago it was. Well, that's so, that's four, four years ago, isn't it? It's an incredible amount of time has passed. So this is quite a brilliant drive from Cocker when he has finished on the tops of the podium in other uh, series since then, in the World Series Showdown in the Nations Cup in 2022, the Asia Oceana semi-final. He took a victory there. So let's see whether he can use all of those years of experience. He's one of the older hands that we've seen here in the Gran Turismo World Series. He's driving an exemplary race as it stands now, just building on that advantage, just up to nearly seven seconds now over Mercedes and Genesis. Yeah, it's been around for a long time, Mazda Kokobun, so a few of the drivers here, of course, as well. Uh, Engel and Estrosa, I think, 2019, was it, Porsche? Uh, yeah, he, his he first ever event in Tokyo. Yeah, they, they won there, so a lot of people, a lot of big names here, and of course, a lot of history in this event for a lot of drivers, but of course, new names through as well. Paul Yura uh, in that Mazda right now, uh, having done their second stop, leader of the two stoppers so far, so we'll see how they compare. Importantly for him, he's now got a clear circuit, so one to look out for. But here's Team Honda, of course, doing well right now on the back of the fight for second place. Um, the gap between Nissan and AMG is fluctuating somewhat, but it is kind of slowly increasing. It's not by a big margin. Now, we're starting to see that the circuit now, I'd say it's pretty much fully dry on that dry line. There are still wet bits there you can see on the side of the circuit, so you do have to somewhat be careful. But on the dry line, it's business as usual. So this is where we're going to start to see the cars performing the drive do a little bit better. Just looking at Honda here as well, as you said, they've got Nevertani behind the wheel of that car at the moment, but they haven't used their ace up their sleeve. 2021 Nations Cup Valerio, uh, champion Valerio Gallo is still yet to take to the wheel of that car, and I wonder whether he is going to be able to really bring the fight to the rest of the field. Now, heading for the thoughts of Team Mazda uh, with BMW close behind. Of course, they are out of sync with the rest of them because they have uh, run in a different strategy. They pitted a lap earlier than the seven teams in front of them. So, we're keen to see how this is all going to develop as we come into the final lap of this race with one driver change left to go for the top seven teams. 
So here we go then. We are a lap and a half away from deciding our Manufacturers Cup Grand Final champion for 2023 here at Barcelona. Right now, Team Mazda and Team BMW sort of making out the second group at the moment. And this is important that they don't squabble too much, that they want to have a chance of winning this race. Because right now they've got clean air. But of course, if you're a racing driver, you always think you should be first. And now Team BMW looking to the outside of Mazda. They're going to try and go side by side into the mud curve. It's one a time through here, boys. Who's going to give? Neither of them do. They both go through side by side. Team Mazda just about holds on for now. I have no idea how they both made it through there in one piece, Tom. Absolutely amazing respect, but they're not giving up any quarter. Our BMW, they're trying to go for the outside line and get the switch back on the inside there. I don't know if that's going to work. We're going to hit into the carousel. You can't go two by two into there, not unless you fancy uh, finding out what hospital food tastes like. Mazda holding firm in eighth position for the time being. So let's see how it works out in the latter half of this lap and the run down to the dotting you heard Mazda, you would imagine, would be a bit of a sitting duck at that point because BMW got that hole being punched in the air in front of them. So important to be ahead at this point as well because there's not really, realistically, any more passing spots here unless you are a lot quicker than the car in front. And I think that uh, Seiya Suzuki is a lot quicker than the car in front. You can see him visibly being held up by the Mazda. So much more speed, carrying so much more through the corners, but unable to make anything happen here because look, there's just no space. Might have to look up the inside here, might he? No, nearly. He, looks at a, he almost created a gap there. So he's just trying to get into the mirrors of the Mazda in front, trying to get into the mirrors of Paul Euro, who I think is struggling in this middle stint. So Suzuki there saying he's a fast driver on the uh, straight and uh, on flying laps, so he thinks if he can pull out uh, in the races, he can make an impact. Well, says Suzuki in the BMW, sitting in ninth place all over the rear wing of that Mazda for now. I'm a fast driver in this race. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean exactly, you're yeah, really fast. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the corners where I struggle. <laughs> yeah. That's always been my downfall, Jamie. <laughs> uh, so coming through and towards the dotting of her, the compression just before. Oh, it's all about the exit out of here, isn't it? But you would imagine that we're going to see BMW taking that uh, position away. But the thing is, if they go too early, they could leave themselves under threat once again from Mazda, and they're going to want trap position coming uh, through towards this final lap. They've already made their final pit stops in this race. They don't have to worry about anything in that respect. But it's a question of how it's going to work out when those remaining 17s make their final changes for the drivers. It's going to be interesting to see um, how much of that time BMW have lost here behind Mazda. I think mean, no doubt they are the faster car. But look at the front of the field, Nissan and Ryota Kokobin have extended that gap now to nearly nine seconds, eight and a half seconds. If we come down the back straight, here comes Team Jess. Look at that overspeed driving by the Mercedes like they are standing still. So Nico Romero, the Spanish driver, the great applause here at our venue at Barcelona, goes up into second. Uh, Honda as well looking as well. They all slip streaming down the straight. Coming now into the last part of the lap, nice, neat, tidy round here as the sun begins to set here at the Nord Schleife. Name a better circuit in the world, I dare you, you can't, you can't do it. This side in the pits then, our leader in, everybody else uh, will follow as well for that last pit stop and that last dash to the line. So just to give another layer of complexity, we've had wet weather in the daytime, we've had dry weather in the daytime, now we've got nighttime dry racing. Estevez behind the wheel of this and he's going to take over at the front of this race and try and bring the ground to the Japanese manufacturer. Genesis, Mercedes, Honda, Renault, Porsche, Lamborghini making their final stops. But where are the out of sequence, the likes of Mazda, BMW, Toyota, Subaru, McLaren going to emerge? This is going to be crucial here for Genesis and Mercedes just coming down the start finish straight. You've got Mazda and BMW, they're easily ahead. What about Toyota as well? Are they going to be able to leapfrog Renault coming down to the first corner? Genesis versus Mercedes side by side on the exit of turn two. This is going to be quite close between them. Mercedes back through and into second place. Genesis relegated down into third. And also Honda, Valerio Gallo, uh, sorry, Jao Pessoa, who's behind the wheel of that car now. I've got to say a, 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 a massive congratulations to Ariotta Koko. What a stint from him. He's now put Matteo Estevez into a place where he can win this race. Eight seconds is the gap. And it's a long lap here at the Nürburgring, over an eight-minute lap time as Genesis there, maybe a little bit of contact from Honda, drives the back cross and Honda there, with the Alfa Soa up into third position. What a race it's been for Team Honda and for Team AMG, both up nine places in the back of the grid, but now Honda might come up on a roadblock. Baptiste Beauvoir, the French general, they've been calling him <laughs> around here. I think maybe he even did that nickname, I think. He has one of the longest-serving AMG drivers 
out there. And we know how fast he is. We know how aggressive he can be. So it's going to be a big ask for Yalpasova to try and make that one more place onto the podium. But can they catch uh, this hand in front of Mateo Estevez? I don't know. It's a big gap. Well, this is for the battle, uh, battle for positions on the podium. This hand still some eight seconds up the road. It depends on what sort of Estevez's pace is going to be. The gap is 7.6 seconds. It was just over eight seconds a few moments ago. Let's see how it develops over the course of this, the final lap of the grand final for the Manufacturers' Cup. BMW going for the wider outside line through onto the Nordschleife. We go, trying to get a better exit on Mazda and attack on the run down in towards Hatzenbach. Polgiora it is behind the wheel of the Mazda. Just dips a wheel onto the grass. A little warning sign there for the Spaniard on home soil. He's in a really unfortunate position. He wants to try and attack the Genesis in front, but he's going to keep an eye on his mirrors that are full of the BMW behind. This is insane racing. This is after four and a half laps of racing. All these cars separated by, well, nothing, really. They're all in simply race. The chance is quick in the straight line. It's going to help it on this part of the circuit. But you have to think that Dean Help maybe is just struggling a little bit as we come up now to the Blue Platz for the last time. AMG in front just about holding off the Alpha Sarah. I've got to say, that Honda looking very, very fast indeed. It might have a go, actually, coming down here into Arenberg, coming down now towards Schwedenkreuz as well. Very fast left hand, and the car gets light. Honda and AMG side by side. Will he go a long way round? He does. Yalpa Sower there overtakes Mercedes AMG and Baptiste Beauvoir up into second position. And Team Mazda launching it on Genesis from a mile back. And Genesis gets pushed out down to sixth position. BMW going through as well. Always chopping and changing in these last stages of the race. And now Paul Jura and Team Mazda are free. Can they get onto the back of Mercedes and Honda? This is going to be hugely exciting as we head into the night time. The headlights illuminating the Nordschleifer circuit. Well, you want it close racing, you have got it by the bucketful. Honda there defending from Mercedes AMG, trying to find their way through. Mazda, BMW, Genesis, and also Toyota lurking in the background. Cue the Jaws music because Adriana Carazza is behind the wheel of that Toyota Supra racing concept machine through into the left hand. And we go at the front, the gap is still 7.3 seconds. Mercedes through, and on the inside of Honda, is that going to put them out of sequence and allow them to be under threat here from Mazda as well? It's mightily close between them. BMW ready to try and pick up their pieces. Honda do eventually only lose the one place as Mercedes and Baptiste Beauvoir elevate themselves up into second. So they contact there, Tom. I didn't see that there. Maybe a little bit of a nudge between the two. And they're trying to go too wide through miss hit miss. That never works out. Not in real life anyway. Not quite in the center. Oh, oh and Master and Paul Euro ejected. Look, there's Team Toyota recovering still from earlier on. Luckily able to rejoin fairly quickly there was Paul Euro. But of course, just as I was saying, you can't really go two by two through there. And there's still a little bit of wet surface right on the outside of the circuit. Well, it's not over until the chequered flag, and there is still a half of a lap to go here at the Nordschleife. Jao Pessoa on the top left corner of your picture, Seiya Suzuki and the BMW right behind. Those two drivers running no sail in third and fourth place, respectively. You've got to be so careful as we head in towards the carousel section, unless you want to have your Christmas dinner through a straw. So, going in towards the right-hander, Honda, now with a bit of a gap to Mercedes in front, some six tenths of a second, not too much in terms of breathing room, but it's getting a little bit in favour of Baptiste Beauvoir at this particular point on the final lap. But we know how quickly the complexion of this race has changed and can change. Yeah, Mercedes in front of Honda at the moment as we come up now towards that carousel section. They have actually started to take a little bit of time out of the Matteo Estevez in the lead here, but I don't think it's going to be enough. If that keeps dropping like this, then definitely it could be anyone's uh, game for the podium. The last two slots are... Uh, under wraps here, we've got Suzuki uh, on board in the BMW and Yopa, so I think he needs to go defensive a little bit of contact maybe between the two cars there as we come up towards the carousel in the background, Genesis uh, defending virently there from Mazda, just about keeping the place there. Now we come into the carousel for the first time. Bam, the car goes in, you run around the concrete there, so bumpy. These guys will be feeling that through the steering wheels. They now come up to this last section, this last third of the course, some of the best piece of racetrack in the world, in my humble opinion and what a place for a showdown here at the world finals in Barcelona well this is going to be hugely exciting we could see Nissan taking the manufacturers cup crown for the first time that gap has come down though to mistake. some 3.6 seconds they've made a mistake on this final lap Mateo Estevez is now going to feel that pressure we didn't see exactly what happened three and a half seconds the gap sits there's only a few more corners to go before he heads towards the Dottinger Hur, but 
It's just a warning sign. He's had enough in his pocket to try and hold on to that uh, position for now. But let's see how this is going to play out. You can see in the back of the pitch ahead of us, that is Mercedes AMG and Vatti Profoir. And that gap now is coming down below three seconds. I think that maybe Estevez has scared himself a little bit now. And now Beauvoir can smell blood in the water. He's got the chase. He's, he can see his target from him. And that's worth so much time when you're chasing somebody. There he is. There he is. Team Nissan, that count was eight seconds. And now almost within range. We're running out of time here. And then can Baptiste Beauvoir do it? Can he catch Team Nissan? Well, Nissan have given themselves a mighty scare this on the final lap. It is all to play for. Whoever wins this race will become the Manufacturers' Cup champions. On board, we ride with Baptiste. We've commented on him so many times. He in particular, he's always been the bridesmaid, but never the bride. Can he do it for Mercedes AMG on this, the final lap? 2.7 seconds, the gap's it. The final battle for the podium places as well. It's not over between Honda and BMW. Zhao Pessoa and Seo Suzuki still very close to one another as we come onto the Dossinger Hill for the final time. How is this going to play out, JB? Every corner, it seems that Nissan's losing time. Mercedes AMG closer and closer, and now Honda and BMW squabbling over that last place the gap is down to two seconds now at the front almost within six beam range amg there and um, that is both while using all the circuit i just don't quite think there's going to be enough time it's so close now bmw and honda side by side too tom yeah genesis also going toe to toe with mazda as we come down the dotting hill this is the battle for the final podium place which of these marks is going to get it keep an eye out for mazda genesis and also toyota in the background who are on the recovery nissan look like they've just got enough in their pocket to hold on to this one for now with only a few corners remaining barring any last lap mistakes honda bmw mazda toyota going for this final podium position as we come up the rise flicking it through into the left-handed kick oh! Oh, bmw biffing into the side of honda huge drama on the final lap team nissan are going to become the manufacturers cup champions of 2023 what a drive mercedes finishing in second and genesis on the podium for the first time ever in the grand final in the manufacturers cup what a race well, and you can see what that means there to the guys down at amg i think that's mateo estevez there i think maybe in tears at this point uh, feeling really very uh, emotional after that result we're going to wait and see of course big shunt at the end there there may be some serious inquiries but i think there's no doubt about our winner team nissan they just about had enough in their pocket at the end despite a last minute few mistakes there from uh, Estevez, but uh, winning by just over a second and a half. And of course, for me, as a massive Team Nissan fan, finally, boys! Well done, well done. <laughs> Well, absolute delight for Team Nissan here. The first time ever that they have become the Manufacturers' Cup champions in 2023. And penny for the thoughts of Honda and for Jao Pessoa as well. He looked absolutely disconsolate after the end of that race. And no surprise at all. They eventually crossed the line in ninth position. Valerio Gallo looks disconsolate there as well. What a dramatic end to the race. We've got to see a replay of what happened in those final couple of laps. It was dark, it was difficult to see exactly how it all pieced together. But as you said, Jimmy, I'm sure the stewards will be looking at it. But it doesn't matter what you say to Jao Pessoa, I don't think there any, is anything that you can that will give him comfort at this particular point. No, I mean, what, a, what I was saying, what a contrast of emotions. You've got the joy and jubilance of AMG. And then on there, Jao Pessoa finally steps out of his rig there. I can see, uh, I think, tears in his eyes. I'm not surprised, really, as he walks by our uh, commentary booth just to get off the stage as quickly as possible, I think. But uh, Baptiste Beauvoir there looking very, very happy there with Peter. It's been a long time for Baptiste. It's been on the podium, so he's happy to be there again. Yeah, absolutely brilliant drive from uh, Team Nissan. Quite incredible for that outfit. Let's have a look at that incident once more. Oh, we kind of just saw the oh, end yeah. of it there, didn't we? It looks like Honda connected with BMW, but I don't know if there was something that sort of kicked off that chain reaction. Either way, what a drive from Team Nissan. I tell you what, uh, Estevez, did not make it easy for himself no, on that no. final lap at all. I think what happened is he made a mistake and then just decided, right, I'm going to cruise to the line. Maybe cruise a little bit too much. But there you are. There are your winning team, Team Nissan, and deserved and so very happy. That's been a long time since this has been on the top set of one of these events. I'm not quite sure when the last time was, Tom. You've got probably a stat for us somewhere to, to go and find that. Yeah. But I, I think it hasn't quite sunk in for these guys yet, you can see. I mean, being a winning one of these events is, a, is a one thing, but winning in front of a massive live audience like we have here in Barcelona is another. Yeah, I just having a look at some of the stats last time out they finished in fifth position in the world series showdown i was having a look back during that race over some of the previous world uh, series 
results for Nissan and they've never been on the top step of the podium. Let's have a look at highlights then from that frenetic grand final. It started off wet with Team Toyota leading the field from Team Subaru. It was only going to be a matter of time before it all kicked off, especially in these tricky conditions. We started the wet, the, the rain was coming down. Nissan got their elbows out in the GTR, making a move into the hairpin on the Grand Prix circuit ahead of Team BMW. Toyota held on to the race lead. We saw Randall Hayward going off into the wall on the outside. We wonder whether that might be their race run early doors. However, they managed to recover quite brilliantly. Unfortunately, it went the other way for the race leaders. Team Toyota looped it on the exit of the carousel, and they never really recovered from that point on. No, just got stuck in the traffic. And here was um, Randall Hayward going around the outside of Takuma Miyazono for the race lead. It was a great opening stint for Lamborghini and Randall Hayward, but unfortunately, it wouldn't continue that way for them. So this was really the highlight of their race, I think. But it shows that that car does have pace, and maybe in the future series they might be able to compete again. Here we'll see Mazda doing two for one out on the fastest corner of the circuit in the wet. How about that for commitment? Awesome <laughs> overtake opportunity. And here was the move for the lead of the race. It's at the start, getting past Randall Hayward just before bitting, giving Kokobun a free uh, track. And there's Sternberg there being narrowly avoided by AMG and Mazda. Yeah, that was very, very close. We saw something similar to that in the Pro-Am race earlier on here today. Yeah. Actually, this was Genesis going a little bit wide of the hairpin. Honda picking their pocket. This was uh, in the closing stage after all of the pit stops had played out. And this is where it all kicked off. Oh, oh, sorry, this is a little bit early before it all kicked off. Ah, oh, it was BMW biffing into the side of Honda. I think they just got themselves onto the grass yeah. there, didn't they, on the inside. Either way, Nissan, what a drive from all three of them. Lyoff Gokovan, Medi Havidi and Matteo Estevez. That's, oh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. He's been pushed into the camera, bless him. That's what it means. And Miyota Gokovan is usually quite chill and quite calm, finally showing a little bit of emotion. Great to see uh, Fabian Portia there as well, of course, an ex-competitor here again to support some of the drivers. And that's what it's about here, that sportsmanship, that family. Everyone's just happy for each other here. And I, even the drivers, who I think, maybe not pleased with the result, will also be happy to congratulate their fellow competitors. Yeah, it was a quite fantastic result. What an amazing job from Team Nissan. Let's have another look at that last lap incident, though, uh, where it all came undone for BMW and for Honda in the last couple of corners. Talk us through here, Jimmy. So here we are then, a little bit of contact between the two of them and onto the grass, BMW going. When you go onto the grass there, you're just a passenger. And what's happening there? They're just, they're just bumping doors a little bit. They're getting a little bit offline breaking. Team Toyota also involved in that as well. And in the background behind that, Mazda also went off the track, but they were kind of saved by the incident that unfolded in front of them as well. So for me, you know what, I'm going to call that as a very, very unfortunate racing incident. You get me, if you're shoved onto the grass and it's, it's, a, it's the last lap of the race, you're going to go for the move, of course you are. Why wouldn't you? wouldn't be a racing driver if you didn't do that. And I think just unfortunately there, when, you, when you're on the grass, obviously the grip isn't there. Nothing you can do. It's rained before as well. So um, BMW, unfortunately, is a little bit of a passenger at that point. Here's our live crowd. At the moment, has been treated. I think one of the coolest races we've had here at the World Series. And as we get underway and ready for our podium ceremony, just setting up now at the moment. Yep, absolutely. So, Let's have a look at the confirmed results there, Jimmy. Uh, so Nissan taking top honours, 1.7 seconds eventually. I mean, given the gap was over eight seconds at the start of the final lap, it was not an easy victory for them. Mercedes finishing second best, Genesis onto the podium in the world finals. What an incredible result for that manufacturer. We saw the unveiling of their vision Gran Turismo car earlier on here tonight and an amazing thing for the design team especially and also the drivers to go home with. Mazda in fourth, Toyota in fifth position, Subaru in sixth place. Honda, BMW, sick as a parrot in ninth and eighth place, respectively. What an end to the grand finals we've had here for the Manufacturers Cup. Let's get all the reaction down on the ground. Team Nissan are with Jules. My goodness me, how was that for a race? I mean, there was, there was some chaos in so many different ways. Um, Talk us through the beginning. I, I feel very stressed for you. How was the beginning? Talk us through your drive, part of the drive. My drive, uh, I had two heart attacks on the last lap because I am too nervous. We first on my first time. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, that's about the lap of my life. It was very chaotic. It's yeah. pretty chaotic, right? It was a lot going on. Um, and then I feel like yeah, yours started well. It sort of, I think the middle, it was not, it came back and it was okay and then it got a bit chaotic. Did you know how the pressure was on? How, how aware were you of what was happening behind you? 
Yeah, well, I didn't know what was really going on behind me. I was trying to <laughs> focus at the front. <laughs> yeah, That's, yeah. That was my main goal. I just, want to, I just wanted to get past as many cars as I could. And I felt pretty confident with the car and I, um, in the wet conditions. And yeah, it actually paid off very well. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of pressure when, you know, everyone does a good drive and you're like, you know, do you, do you feel that as well? Or does it focus you more? Um, well, <laughs> I just try to race like usual, you know, like um, just try to minimize the mistakes as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, even though I missed my braking on the first corner and second lap, uh, I still managed to get back to the front. And it was important to make that move right at the end of the, sec the second lap because uh, it's hard to overtake when you have to follow the dry line. And also, we saw that Lamborghini got a hit from behind. And since I saw that, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of relieved already. <laughs> I was like, the gap is increasing with P1. We just have to hold on. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you did so well. And Rio to Cockburn, what an amazing drive for you. You seemed really cool. You, you increased that gap so much. How was the drive for you? あの、すごくクールな、あの、ドライブで、もうあの、すごくどんどんあの、後ろとのギャップを増やしていきましたけど、走っていてどんな感覚でしたか。はい、え、最後のマテオ選手のためにリードをどれだけいくらでも稼
And finally, please welcome from Japan, Ryota Kokobun, from France, Medi Hafidi, and from Argentina, Mateo Estevez, for Team Nissan, the 2023 Manufacturers Cup champions! And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you please to stand if you are able and remove your caps for the national anthem of our winning manufacturer, Team Nissan, the national anthem of Japan. for the Manufacturers' Cup Champions of 2023, Team Nissan. And now it is time for the trophy celebrations to take place here in Barcelona. Presenting the third place trophy is John Krasewski, the Senior Chief Designer of North America for Genesis. And it is awarded to Dean Helt, to Nico Romero, to Yuito Sasaki of Team Genesis. Now for the second place medals presented by Thomas Yakamaya, the CEO of Fanatec. It is awarded to Lucas Benelli from Brazil, Japan's Tomoaki Yamanaka and Francis Baptiste Beauvoir, the drivers for Mercedes AMG, who finish in second place. And now time for the first place medals. They are presented by Jeffrey Marseille, the gaming manager for Michelin. And it is awarded to Japan's Ryota Kokobun, France's Medi Hafidi, and Argentina's Mateo Estevez, the winners of the Manufacturers' Cup champions, Team Nissan. Finally, the first place trophy presented to the winning manufacturer by Kazunori Yamauchi, the Gran Turismo series producer. And of course, it is awarded to Japan's Ryota Kokobun, to France's Medi Hafidi, and to Argentina's Mateo Estevez. Give it up, your 2023 Manufacturers Cup champions. It is Team Nissan!
mean, we told you that today was going to be just as spicy <laughs> as yesterday, and we are always right. Well, most of the time. Jimmy, as a veteran of that particular track, was oh, that yeah. pretty accurate? That was pretty much every race there. <laughs> um, and every race we see here at one of the GT World Series is full of action, full of drama. We've got a whole number day of it tomorrow. I, I can't wait. That was amazing. How, what was your read on it, Tom? Oh, oh it's just a spectacular. That final lap in particular, there was so much tension with Mateo Estevez wondering if he was going to be able to make it to the line oh, in first that was place. Close. Such a gap that just decreased. We thought, oh, and he just had enough in his pocket. And as Jimmy rightly said in comments, he needed every second of that gap when he came down to it. Oh, Randall Hayward, what an amazing drive! And then Lambo up and down. It's just, I couldn't keep up. Oh, I had like chaotic notes, just like the <laughs> scribblings of an insane person, just like yeah. Honestly, the positions were up and down like a fiddler's elbow during that race. You've never seen anything quite like it. It was spectacular. It was absolutely amazing. And of course, we have the Michelin Driver of the Day still up for grabs. So yep, make your vote known, and it will be announced during the press conference, which is just in a few moments. But wow, I think we all need a little bit of a sit down in between. Um, that's been an amazing, uh, amazing show for today. Amazing driving. And of course, tomorrow we have the Nations Cup. So we are back once again. I Oh, it can't be more dramatic than the past two days. Surely, what's going to happen? Well, we always deliver on GT, though, don't we? Whatever we seem to do, we always seem to raise the bar that little bit higher the day after. And, of course, the, Man uh, sorry, the Nations Cup tomorrow, different format. It's a team's championship now, so it's not just one individual driver that will take the crown. Exactly. It's three for a nation. Exactly, so it's still all to what, what are you excited for? I mean, right. this is set in the barrier. We've had an awesome day yesterday with the Toyota Kazoo Racing GT Cup. We've had an awesome day of the day of the Manufacturers Cup. Nations has got a lot to live up to. Uh, I'm sure it it's really going to deliver. It always does. Oh, well, we have had such a pleasure being your host for today. Like, stick around for the press conference in just a few moments. And, you know, thank you so much. And, of course, a yeah, big thank you to our um, international commentators who've been working just as hard. Was it fun being back in the booth? It was hot being back in the booth. I didn't bring I mean, any microphones today, so I'll take that as a win. All right, well, there we go, with small victories. <laughs> well, we have had an amazing day here uh, with you today, and we cannot wait to bring you even more action for tomorrow for that Nations Cup. So it's goodbye from me, goodbye from Tom, goodbye from Jimmy. I'm just going to talk for you now. <laughs> yeah? We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Barcelona, the venue for the grand finals of the 2023 Gran Turismo World Series. We have just, just witnessed an incredible Manufacturers Cup evening of racing. The ultimate result was that Nissan were crowned as champions for the first time. Team Mercedes AMG finishing in second place and Team Genesis in third position. So please, first of all, a round of applause for our top three finishers here tonight in Barcelona. Well, first of all, we'll start with the newly crowned champions, Riot Kokoma, Mehdi Hafidi and Matteo Estevez. Uh, first of all, let's start with Mehdi. Mehdi, um, you started that race for Team Nissan. Just talk us through that, uh, that opening stint from your perspective in the wet conditions at the Nürburgring. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so I started a race uh, in the wet conditions. I basically uh, wanted to uh, wait uh, at the beginning to make moves, you know, like uh, after sector two. And uh, in the end, uh, I felt like I could overtake the BMW driven by um, Thomas. And yeah, um, so I went for it. I, I got the P3 and then I tried to catch up to the guys in front. I saw that um, I was catching them quite uh, quickly. And I tried to make uh, moves uh, any way I could despite uh, the track being so narrow. Uh, yeah, in the end, I managed to, to get in front. And then, <laughs> like, and then I tried to uh, increase the gap. I was uh, pushing a little bit too much in the first corner. That was uh, a mistake on my part. But thankfully, it wasn't um, the critical uh, move in the race because I still managed to, um, to hold the car and uh, follow the uh, two guys in front of me and then try to overtake uh, the uh, Lamborghini at the final straight. I almost um, thought that I wouldn't uh, manage to pass because uh, the straight line speed, um, I was trying to have a slingshot basically with the slipstream and I thought I did it too late, but in the end uh, we, w we went side by side and then I saw that the door was open for the last corner, I went for it uh, just to make sure that my teammate uh, Coco Bunsan uh, makes his um, stint uh, in the clean air. Mehdi, thank you very much indeed. Let's move over to your teammate Riotta. Uh, Riotta, you did, drove the second stint for uh, Team Nissan and you managed to pull out a really good advantage over uh, the rest of the field. Just talk us through that middle stint from your perspective. Hello. Yeah, no, I'm waiting for the audio because he can't hear me. あ、コクブンさん、あの、え、日産のセカンドドライバーとしてあのかなりのギャップをあの自分のスティントの時に設けられたと思いますけど、あのその時のあの走ってる間の心境というのを教えてもらえますか。メフリー選手が雨の激しいバトルの中を抜けてくれて自分は安心して自分のペースでセカンドスティントを走り最後のマテオ選手にバトンを託すことができました。そうですね。えっとあのそうにおいつあ、the uh, under the heavy wet, wet conditions, um, you know, he, I, he maintained a good position for me to take over the car. Um, so I just tried my best to, uh, um, you know, hand it over to the next driver in the best possible condition as well. Thank you very much indeed. And let's finally move over to Mehdi Havidi. Mehdi, we saw you coming into the final lap and you had an eight second gap. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry to Matteo Estevez, I apologise, sorry Matteo. Uh, Matteo, you had an eight second gap coming on to that final lap. By the chequered flag, that gap was down to under two seconds. First of all, just talk us through what happened on that final lap. Uh, I had a momentum on the mid part of the track because I was really nervous. Um, and yeah, yeah, they are really fast. The Cocoon is for me the driver of the day. Uh, Mehdi did uh, excellent work on rain and let me be calm on the last lap and don't push because uh, I don't have time for practice with the settings and yeah, there is the survival of this. 
And uh, how do you feel um, for Team Nissan to be crowned as the Manufacturers' Cup champions of 2023? Uh, this is the, the best life of, of my life. Uh, happy for the team, for them, for them, they, the service, uh, for my country, obviously, and uh, yeah, for my friends and family. Mateo, thank you very much. Once again, Team Nissan, the 2023 Manufacturers Cup champions. Huge congratulations. Uh, let's now move over to Team Mercedes AMG. Uh, we'll just ask a couple of questions and any of the drivers can answer them. Baptiste, we'll go with you first of all because you've got the microphone in your hand. Second place for Mercedes AMG here tonight in the World Finals. How do you reflect on that race for your team? <laughs> really red, really red. Right. Uh, looks like Miracle ex exist. Uh, after what happened in the sprint race, uh, Lucas has, was losing a bit hope, so I tried to motivate him uh, again, and it worked really well. Yeah, Yamanaka-san did an amazing stint, Lucas as well, and um, yeah, it, it's even more a miracle in my opinion because I, I, when I wake up this morning, I was feeling really sick, uh, really bad phys physically, and. Um, I, I, I could not uh, let my teammate uh, drive on me uh, uh, together. I needed to, 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 help, uh, to help them uh, until, the last, until the last lap. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy because in Amsterdam that was uh, a bad experience for us and uh, we fixed it now. So vice world champion, that's a really, good, really nice result. Thank you very much, Baptiste. Uh, Yamanaka-san, let's ask you uh, a question as well before we move over to, to Genesis. Um, how do you look at that race from your perspective? Very changeable conditions, very difficult to work out the strategy. How did you as a team plan that race? この yeah, so, you know, today the weather conditions started in really hard rain and, uh, you know, we knew during the practice that it would start drying later on in the race. Um, so we tried to, uh, you know, put together a plan that uh, would allow us to drive the fastest, uh, you know, under those conditions. Um, but, you know, starting in the 11th place, uh, we're pretty far back, but uh, we knew that, uh, you know, in the rain, there's going to be a lot of chaos anyways. Um, so, you know, the focus was to really stay stable and stay true to the track. And, uh, and, and you know, Lucas and Batiste really did a good job, uh, you know, uh, getting us ahead. Uh, so I'm really satisfied with the second place result. Tom Aki, thank you very much. Once again, a round of applause for second place in the Manufacturers' Cup to Lucas Benelli, to Tom Aki Yamanaka and to Baptiste Beauvoir. An amazing performance. And now we'll move over to Genesis as well. Uh, first of all, of course, we've got Dean Help, we've got Nico Romero and we've got Yuito Sasaki. Uh, first of all, let's talk to yourself, Dean. Third place for Genesis. We unveiled the Genesis Vision Gran Turismo car here tonight. We've got a lot of the Genesis team here this weekend. How does it feel to be able to bring that manufacturer a podium for the first time here? Uh, it means absolutely everything. I mean, this uh, this brand spoils the three of us every time we come here for the World Finals. They're so supportive, um, and uh, yeah, we owe them we owe them absolutely everything. And uh, the car looks absolutely amazing. Um, unfortunately, um, yeah, I wasn't quite able to do uh, my part of the job. I really wanted to keep us towards uh, the front of the train there at the end, but uh, ultimately, um, luck was on our side this afternoon. Thank you very much, Dean. Now let's move over to Nico. Nico, um, that race was incredibly challenging. You guys were up and down the order and all over the place, and we heard a little bit of sass from you on the on the team radio as well. And um, how do you look at that race from your perspective with your stint? Well, it was quite the interesting race because our car is really bad under wet conditions. We have no traction. Yuito did an amazing job with what we had. Then I'm 
Sorry for what happened with Lamborghini, I just couldn't do anything else. But I kept my head down, tried to keep up with Mercedes. I even told Lucas to push that I wanted to follow him to the end so we can run away from the guys behind. And then on the final lap, well, I don't know what happened. I, I was expecting two or three cars to be off the track, but when I saw every other car and the end stopping, letting everyone by, I just couldn't believe it. Nico, thank you very much. Many congratulations to uh, Nico Romero, to Dean Helt and to Yuto Sasaki of Team Genesis for their third place finish in the Manufacturers' Cup. And before we open the press conference to uh, the media who are here in attendance in Barcelona, we can now reveal our Michelin Driver of the Day uh, for the Manufacturers' Cup for the World Finals in 2023. And it is awarded to Riotta Kokoban. Many congratulations to Riotta Kokoban. Uh, I would now like to open the floor up to questions from our media here in Barcelona. Uh, Richard from Simmerance in France. Uh, question for Team Nissan. Uh, we have had two key phases on the race where the car seems to shine uh, at the end of uh, the intermediate tires. Uh, while it was more of a struggle at the end of the race, can you maybe for the players at home who are not used to those tricky conditions talk to us about like how did you manage the tire management and how does it feel behind the wheel between those two phases and those tricky conditions? Um, so yeah, uh, in the race, yeah, we were very close together. Uh, it puts pressures on, on us uh, quite a lot, but you know, I just tried uh, basically to focus on what's happening in front of me, not too much at the back, otherwise I would lose my, my concentration. And I felt like uh, I had to make any moves possible so my uh, teammates can push uh, in cleaner, as I said. And the very last move I've done in the second lap was uh, probably uh, um, what gave us the chance to, to win be because uh, Coco Bunsan was uh, just flying. And um, I, I think we wouldn't have done it if, uh, like, yeah, if all the moves weren't made. We wouldn't have won, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, one further question down on the floor. Um, Andrew from GT Planet. Uh, congratulations to all of the drivers, and particularly to uh, Mehdi, and Matteo, and Riota. I'd like to ask Riota a question specifically, if I may. Um, five years ago, same car, same track. You were that close to victory. How does it feel to put that behind you and get the championship you so richly deserve? Uh, wasn't my best pace, but with the with the cup and only chill and finish the race. Um, あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Actually, I think yes, because the gap at the end was only one second point seven, I think. And that's what uh, Yamanaka-san told me, that uh, one more lap and maybe we could have overtake Nissan. But uh, the race is five laps, not six. It's like this. Vice World Champion is already nice, so congrats to Nissan. And uh, by the way, they had an unlucky last lap because they were losing uh, many seconds. So in my opinion, Team Nissan deserve uh, the title, really, of course. Thank you very much indeed. Any further questions from the floor? OK, wonderful. We will bring that uh, to an end then. Uh, once again, please congratulate third place, Dean Helt, Nico Romero and Yuito Sasaki for third place for Team Genesis in the Manufacturers' Cup. Second place to Lucas Benelli, to Tomoaki Yamanaka and to Baptiste Beauvoir for Team Mercedes AMG. And to the newly crowned Manufacturers' Cup champions, Ryota Kokoban, Mehdi Hafidi and Matteo Estevez for Team Nissan. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here for the Gran Turismo World Finals Manufacturers' Cup. We are live tomorrow with the Nations Cup from 4pm local time. Thank you very much for joining us and we will see you then. Bye-bye.